evening, everybody. I'm Bill Edwards along with Bucky Wagner. Greetings from one all-American city to another, Tacoma, Washington, to Savannah, Georgia. Bucky Wagner is with me, and he is stepping out of his role as athletic director at Georgia Southern, and he's going to be the color commentator for tonight. Bucky, I guess if they tried to pick two more biased people uh, for Georgia Southern, they couldn't have found him anywhere. I hope we're just not too nervous, <laughs> because I know we'll be excited. I know our fans will back there. And and I just hope they kind of bear with us. This is, uh, this is an incredible feat for Georgia Southern to have come this far, this fast, and to be back for the second year in a row to defend a national championship. And we've done it on the road. This is our ninth game out of, what, 13 now on the road? 13, 14, yeah. And uh, again, this is something that's never been done before. No team has ever repeated as the national champion. And I guess, Bill, we've done a lot of things that have never been done before, so we hope we can continue tonight. Playing inside, now they, they say this may be an advantage, maybe it's not. Arkansas State has never played indoors before. This is the first time this season that they've played on an artificial surface. There is a different atmosphere. I certainly hope that they have the same problems that we had when we went to East Tennessee State. As all our fans remember when we went up and played there on the flat surface inside and, and uh, mentally it, it gave us problems. Uh, Realistically, both teams have to play in the same field and they both have to block each other and, and there probably will be nothing more than what the sports writers make of it uh, as far as the outcome of the game. This is without a doubt probably the loosest team I think I have ever seen in my life, uh, the Georgia Southern team I'm talking about. These guys, they never let anything bother them. Every, every game is just another game. They never take anybody lightly. I think defensive coach Mike Healy said that. Well, we have a team that's based on skill. And we have to be loose, we have to be relaxed in order to run the option, in order to throw the ball and do the things that we have to do. Uh, defensively, maybe they ought to get a little tighter and get a little more <laughs> uptight. But uh, that's just the character of the, of the individuals, and, and you really don't change that in a football situation. Uh, they feel good about themselves, they feel good about our chances, and we'll just uh, let them be loose and let them play hard. Eric Russell is one of those coaches who never takes all of the credit. Or he hardly takes, a, uh, probably doesn't take enough of the credit, Bucky. He's always talking about his assistant coaches, how well they do. And one of the things that's really important is that he points out how well his coaches come up with ideas that our team can do, that Georgia Southern can do. It's a, it's a situation where they, they don't take the personnel and say, this is what we're going to run. They run something the personnel can do. Well, that's, of course, awfully important. But it is good that uh, the individual coaches that we have are people that can deal with our players as individuals, can deal with their abilities. Oftentimes you can get tied up in the X's and O's and look at something that would really look good on paper and look like it would work good against that particular defense, but if your kids can't execute it, there's no need to try it. <laughs> I'll never forget if a high school coach that came to me and said he had the best offense in the world. He didn't win a game because his kids couldn't execute it, but he had the best offense in the world. <laughs> so I think that's a, that is uh, what Coach was getting to, that, they, that uh, we have to be able to do the things that our kids are capable of doing, and uh, that's what our offensive coaches and defensive coaches have been able to do. Arkansas State, a good team that runs an excellent wishbone. I don't think we faced a wishbone or not one this good before uh, in a long time. But. We haven't faced one since Troy State uh, last year. And this is an awfully, awfully good Arkansas State team. And with the wishbone, you just have to be patient. You have to play hard. And you've got the hope that uh, you make the open field tackles that they're going to force you into making. And uh, we're just, of course, very apprehensive because it is an explosive team. I think that the, the uh, key to the game really breaks down into three phases. It's going to be a multiple faceted situation. Both of us are going to try to run our fullbacks. And that will depend on how strong their defensive line is, how strong our offensive line is, whether or not the fullback can sustain the attack. And we can make four or five yards with the fullback. That's where it all starts with both our offenses. The second phase is that the skill in running the option that both quarterbacks obviously have been skilled. They're running it all year long. And just if they can get out there, reduce the mistakes, read the defenses properly, and make the proper cuts and the proper pitches and, and have no fumbles. And the third aspect of the game is a passing game. And we have a little more expanded passing game than they do. They rely entirely upon their run. When they do pass, they pass because your defense is overcommitted and in the secondary. And they pass more as a surprise, more of something to keep your secondary honest. Right. When they do pass, they pass effectively. 
All right. Let's call Pat Spurgeon in here. He is the coach uh, who coaches the kickers for Georgia Southern, but he's also the super scout that goes out and looks at all these other people. What do we know about Arkansas State, Coach? We know they're tough, Bill. Uh, they're the best team we played, and I like to think the best two 1AA teams were in the finals. And uh, it remains to be seen whether they're as good as they think they are. But they're a very good football team. All right. Well, let's hope that we can do it just one more time in it. Uh, Bill, if I've ever seen a football team ready to play, I think we're ready to play. And all you can do is get ready and go out and do your best, and I think we're ready to do that. Okay, the Georgia Southern Eagles are ready. We're going to come back and find out about it right after this. Folks out there in the middle, Gerald Harris, Tracy Hamm, and Danny Durham representing Georgia Southern as captains. Cassie yeah, Francis, Georgia Marvin Melvin, Anthony Withers, and Randy Barnhill for Arkansas Please State. Please call. Please call it loud. If I should drop it, we'll do it again, all right? Please call in the air. You called heads? Heads it is, you have won the toss. Georgia Southern you wins the toss. The half, second half. We'll take, we'll you to that gives them the opportunity to where they have to receive, the receive. If they you kick, then, what goal do you want to then they would have to kick to us both times. Defend that goal. Let's turn around this way, gentlemen. Okay, they'll talk about which goal we're going to be defending and which way they're going. Arkansas and that's the indication. To receive. Right, As you look at the television set, Arkansas State will be receiving to the left, and Georgia Southern will be kicking from the right. And we're getting ready to get underway for the 1986 National Championship, Division I AA, the ninth year that this has been played, starting back in 1978 when Florida A&M beat Massachusetts 35-28. to And what was a dandy, and they have been all pretty good games since then. And, of course, last year, Georgia Southern winning it over Furman by a score of 44-42. to You see Irk Russell on the sidelines there. And uh, he's getting ready for, well, the biggest game in Georgia Southern history so far? Absolutely the biggest game. Nobody has ever won it twice. So Georgia Southern trying to become a team of destiny. Last week, knocking off the only unbeaten team that was in this playoff, Nevada Reno. Georgia Southern's handbone offense continued to pile up some impressive numbers in that one. 48 to 38, the semifinal win last weekend, in which the handbone accounted for 613 yards in total offense. That's the highest of any game this season, third highest in the school history. Eagles amassing some 466 yards rushing. That's the second highest total in school history. While quarterback Tracy Ham passed for more than 147 yards. 613 yards also marked the first time this season, Bucky, that the Eagles went over 600 yards in offense. It was a wild affair in Reno, as most of our fans saw last year. Last yes, year. indeed, and uh, those folks out there were just exuding confidence. They'd already sold 2,500 tickets to this game. I wonder if they're here tonight. <laughs> Anybody check? I doubt seriously, but there sure are a lot of Georgia Southern fans here. There are. Yeah, our, fans, our fans have been in a pep rally since 3 o'clock this <laughs> afternoon. If they make it through the game, it'll be a wonder. I've got a uh, feeling there's more people here this year, Bucky. It looks like a little bit fuller here than it was last year. They've sold 8,000 tickets, or better than 8,000 tickets to the game this year, and it should be a... Rob Witten ready to kick be off. A bigger crowd. Yes, it should. Gerald Patterson, one of the guys back to receive. As is Tate Andre, and the man very deep in the end zone is number four, Michael Adams, and the kick is away. Adams is going to take it at about the 15-yard line, and he's going to come straight up the middle, and he's finally racked up and knocked down as he gets across the 25-yard line up to near the 30. Let's see where they're going to spot it. They're going to put it down at uh, the 29. So a pretty decent run back. And Dwayne Brown, number 15, the guy who says he's tired of hearing about Tracy Ham. He's the better quarterback, and he's going to prove it tonight. They've got this excellent nose guard that uh, they say that we can't move. But we're going to have to double-team him, and that's going to lead things. Here's the offensive lineup. Kenneth Nelson in tackles. Here's the line. Tony Walton, Jim Wiseman, also John Susky. Kenneth Nelson and Brown's got him set they are in the wishbone first time we faced a wishbone since Troy State last season as Bucky pointed out at the first of the game the pitch going on the outside and the pitch is given to Boris Whiteside Robert Underwood finally knocks him out of bounds they came back to the short side with our with our option if you would they they run a bill what is called a load option where they really don't option everyone. They block the person that is going to take the quarterback, and it makes it more difficult. If our folks would watch the halfback on the side toward the play is running, they'll see him come in there and, and block our defensive end. It takes a while to adjust to this. Pickup of almost five yards. Let's call it second down, maybe a long five, maybe six yards. 
as Brown is going to give it once more. Okay. It goes right up the middle as a fumble on the play, I believe, and it looks like Georgia Southern may have the football. Let's hope. Let's that's hope. what they're signaling. Yes, sir. Hey, that's wow. what the they have got it. Let's see who comes out of the pile with it. That's Donnie Allen on the bottom of the pile. Big number 61 who comes up with it out of Lab Oak, Florida, playing in his final game as a Georgia Southern Eagle. And Dr. Harry Carter, the acting president of Georgia Southern University, <laughs> Georgia Southern, what should be Georgia Southern University, but it's not. It's Georgia Southern College so far. And here we go as we watch it one more time. And Donnie Allen coming up with a big number 61 under there. And you see Donnie on the sidelines there with Coach Russell. Tracy Ham brings him up. We go into the ham bone. Split wide to the left. Outside is Tony Belzer. Ham is checking off at the line of scrimmage. Let's see how well they block that nose guard. The give is going to be to Gerald Harris off the left side. Looks like he slices through I for the three thing. or four yards there, Bucky. This is what we have to do, Bill, is to establish the fullback attack. Now, they're giving us a little different defensive look than what we've seen on films. They're sitting in their 50, their five-man line, but they're holding a person back in the middle as a deep linebacker, and that person will be taking the pitch on both sides. Well, you see the offensive they, line for Georgia Southern. They we'll moved down, out of it now. We'll run down the backfield here in just a second. And once again, we've got Gerald Harris set back, and the give is going to be to Gerald. He goes off that left side one more time. Looks like Clint Ledbetter finally gets him, and it's going to be third down and very short yardage. Less than a yard, maybe right at a yard. Going to put the short yardage, short yardage offense in with uh, Larry Boone and James Carter back in the halfback spots to, to block for uh, Gerald Harris. And there you see the defense setting up for Arkansas State. Defensive backfield, good look at Tracy Ham there as Ham brings him up to the line. A little different set in the backfield, sort of a pro set, and the give is going to be to Gerald Harris. No, it's going to be a keeper for Tracy. Tracy outside, he's going to get to the 25 and get plenty of yardage for the first down, but he doesn't get much more than that. Their corner did a good job coming across and looking for Tracy on that. He did indeed. That was uh, Elbert Shelley out of Truman, Arkansas, 5'11", 180-pound senior that finally stopped him, but it's going to be first down for Georgia Southern, down at about the 20... Dave Williams back with you. Uh, you haven't missed a thing with the game between the Rams and 49ers. It's over. The 49ers have won it 24-14. They are the NFC West champs. Back to the Georgia Southern game. So State has fumbled. And Donnie Allen has recovered it. No score in the ball game. Georgia Southern's first offensive drive. Ricky Harrison motion. The pitch going to go to Ricky. Ricky's going around the right side. He's got some yardage over there. Looks like he's got another first down for Georgia Southern. Great job. Great job by Monty Sharp, pushed the corner off and got his block and made it able for Ricky to get around the corner. Most people don't seem to understand. Lee Gregg was a Greg Lee, that is, the guy who made the tackle. A lot of people don't uh, seem to understand sometimes, Bucky, that you're, um, as you see Ricky just going off there from the end zone camera, that uh, when you've got, uh, when even though you're not carrying the ball, you don't have the play off. Good blocking by our blocking backs and people like Monty Sharp are responsible for big yardage a lot of times. And the oh, give okay. is going to go to Ricky Harris, and uh, no, it was a fake to Ricky Harris. I can't keep up with Tracy. Tracy got a few yards. Tracy Looks like Charlie Frederick and Fred Barnes and Clint Ledbetter. They had a blitz on that time, Bill, and the fella really got into our backfield Here you see and caused motion. some problems. Here you see a little slow motion yeah. shot of it. Tracy trying to keep it there. All right. And he's finally stacked up. The big guy that gets him is big, number 70, and that's Charles Frederick. And let's see, there's going to be a uh, timeout on the field and with a no, no score right now. And we'll be back after this. Here's now second down and long. Expect them to come after Tracy. Okay, we're back here at Tacoma. Tracy Ham rolling to his left. Fires into the end zone. And no, no up the end zone is the Monty Sharp. Looked like it was the end. They haven't got this thing feel well marked off at all. It looks from this angle like it's Shelly Elbert is the guy who got Monty Sharp. But Monty's going to be complete. That's going to be first and go. No, not. Uh, First down at the five-yard line, third, third down. down. Third, third down, third down, two. Monty, if he would have just gone for the goal line that time, he tried to get around one of the tacklers and moved him back to the five. You see that flak jacket that uh, Tracy Ham is wearing? This kid really takes some shots at times after plays are over. You don't this realize is a big the beating. play right now, Bill. Yeah. You don't realize the beating that he takes out there. So Tracy bringing him up. Third and three from the five. And Tracy on the quarterback draw is not going to get very far. He's wrapped up by nope. big number 99. That's Dan Miller, the linebacker that got him out of Fort Myers, Florida. He's a junior. Might have picked up, uh, what, a half yard on the play or something like that. 
Don't Gotta come out to post him, we've got to kick the field goal. We've got to come out of there with three points. So the way we started out last week, drove down, got close, couldn't quite punch it in. And Tim Foley will come on, kick the field goal. And this is just about automatic for him. Tim Foley will try a 20 yarder. Tim from Miami, he gets it up. That shouldn't be any trouble. It's good. The timeout on the field, the score is Georgia Southern three, Arkansas State nothing. And we'll be right back after this timeout. Witten getting ready to kick it away. Georgia Southern up by a score of three to nothing as you see the GSC mascot and the big crowd that's come along from Statesboro, Savannah, Vidalia, Metter, you name it, Southeast Georgia, they're here. We got the Bethel High School band back with us too as Rob Witten kicks it away way down the field. Good Witten's kick. been doing very well. It's going to be and taken the there at the other end by number four, Michael Adams. Adams he's is going to come right up the middle. He's getting away from, gets a good block, comes across the 25 and near the 30-yard line. Rob Witten at the time. Just about where they set so far, and it looks like uh, one of the guys getting up off the bottom of the pile. Is the Rob kicker. Witten got down there and made that tackle. Rob Witten. Bless him. Rob has really improved on his kicking. In the last few weeks. And here comes the wishbone again. We're going to for the quarterback in the pitch. Dwayne Brown, the quarterback, bringing him up. He's a 5'9, 180 pound junior from Memphis, Arkansas State. The Indians, they are in the wishbone. The give is going to go straight ahead. Big number 35 in there. That's Richard Kimball, the fullback. That bill is what we have to do. We have to be able to stop their fullback attack to force them to go out with the rest of, the, of their, their offense. We were able to run our fullback early in the series when we had the football. That's a big play right there to stop them for a yard and a half on that fullback play. Give him two yards on the play. Be second down and eight. You see Eric Russell on the sidelines there as uh, Brown seems to have checked off or something. And the give is going to be right. No, it's going to be a keeper. Pitch out on the right side. And all the way down, one guy gets out of, finally gets out of, bounds. out of bounds. And that's Boris Whiteside that took the ball and gets run out after about, um, let's see, picked up about five yards on the play. Or maybe not even that much. Looks like he picked up only about three yards. Boy, it looked like he was gone for a, for a bunch, didn't it, there for There's, a second. As you watch it yeah. from the side, there goes the pitch. But look where he stepped out of bounds. Yeah. They're splitting both ends and balancing up our defense. And then our, our safety, Rob or uh, Bowen, is moving toward the strong side of the field, and they're running back to the short side of the field. Brown's going to go Here's back to throw pass. Back pass. First pass of the night, and it's going to be a long one down oh. there. Almost intercepted by Nay Young of Savannah. He had it in his hands and dropped it. And I don't know who he, in I know he intended that for uh, number 17 out there. Um, let's see who that is on the program. Fred Bennett is split in. Split end coming across through the throwback route. But, uh, there is um, no doubt that there was nobody there as you watch it. Brown going straight down the middle. And look who's there. That one was way overthrown. Either he ran the wrong pattern or something. And Nay Young was a guy who nearly came up with it. I just think he just overthrew the, overthrew the pass. So punter Steve Sampson from Crestview, Florida is in to punt it away. Standing about his 20-yard line. Gets away a dandy. It's going to be taken by Belzer at the 34. Belzer gets across the 35 to about the 38-yard line where he's knocked down, and Georgia Southern goes on the attack again. Three nothing the score. We are in the first quarter. Georgia Southern's in the lead. Just the way things started out last week as you watch Belzer. On the reception. And the blocking broke down, and you see Santa's here tonight cheering Georgia Southern on. We're going to need all the help we can get as Tracy calls him out. He's going to keep. Cuts inside. Nice blocking. There goes Tracy up to the 50-yard line and across midfield and into Arkansas State territory. That was just a great move by Tracy, Bill. The end was sitting there, had him, and Tracy just cut up inside of him and broke a couple tackles and just did a super job on that play. This is the guy they say that they were going to handle at will with no problem whatsoever. Watch Tracy cut back inside on his blocking. This guy's got the greatest moves and the greatest footwork you have ever seen. This has got to be one of the most exciting college athletes I think I have, maybe I've ever seen, Bucky. They're back in their 50 defense. This is the defense that we had anticipated. 
at the 49. Oh, Tracy's cool. going to keep it once again. He goes upside and cuts inside and gets to about the 40-yard line before he's finally knocked down there. Pick up of almost 10 yards before Don Palmer, the defensive end, finally gets him down out of Brandon, Mississippi. And it is going to be a first down. A little over 10 yards on the play for Tracy Ham. Good we're shot working, of Tracy. We're working the ball into the sideline away from their strong safety. That time we started the motion, looked like we were going strong, and then came back with the counter option, and Tracy was able to break loose. 3-0 the score. If you've just joined us, Georgia Southern recovered an Arkansas State fumble and took it down to about the two-yard line, couldn't get it in. Tim Foley kicked a field goal as Tracy goes Ooh. back to pass, fires to wide open Tony Belzer. He makes a good move and gets out, tries to get away from the defender, but is brought down around by the jersey, and he is collared in there by Vincent Barnett free safety who finally came up to bring him down. Bill, their cornerback came up for the option and the, evidently the coaches picked it up the last time because their cornerback is nowhere even close to Belser. It's really the weak safety had to come over from the hash mark, come over to, to pick that up and he was just completely wide open. He was standing there waving his arms. If he hadn't uh, gotten, by, gotten him by the jersey there, Tony to had six points. But it's first down for Georgia Southern at the 22 yard line. The give is going to go to Gerald Harris, slicing off the left side. Gerald's down to the 15-yard line for good yardage. That's a trap play. We're trapping the tackle on this side. Charles Fredericks. Fredrickson is the guy who um, made the tackle. And here you watch the replay as it's going to give to Gerald Harris. See the trap on the tackle. Beautiful blocking on the Georgia Southern line. Go Eagles. Finally wrapped up there by Charles Frederick. And it's going to be second down and about uh, two, three yards to go. Seven yards gain on the play as Gerald Harris gets the ball again and he gets very close to the first down, dancing inside near the 10-yard line. Dan Miller comes up, the linebacker, to make the stop. And Excellent. Excellent cut by Gerald there. Their, their middle guard is very strong. And he, Gerald that time was able to run right at him and cut behind him and get up. Close to the first down, we hope the first down. They're going to come out and measure it. They've called a timeout here so they can measure and see whether or not Georgia Southern does indeed have the first down as you watch that Arkansas State defense, the guys who were so confident to the point where you just also almost uh, thought that they were a little too confident. Bill, you make, the first down. you make me nervous. We've got four quarters to go. <laughs> oh, I know that. You watch Irk Russell and his son Jay there on the sidelines giving signals. Jay Russell. Standing right next to his dad, Ert. They've got something here in the Tacoma Dome. I think they call it neon art or something. You'll be seeing some shots of it here and there. If you can figure out what it is, give us a call and let us know. First down, Georgia Southern at about the 12-yard line. Arkansas State. Tracy. A pitch going to Gerald Harris. Gerald Harris inside the 10, inside the 5 to about the 3 yard line. And he stays in bounds as the clock keeps rolling. Georgia Southern up by a score of 3 to nothing, trying to make it 10. 52 rushes for Gerald, for Ricky Harris this year for 536 yards. Ricky, Ricky has really come into his own the last year. Ricky did an excellent job that time coming up inside the corner. We got the corner kicked out. The corner was there to take the pitch, but we got kicked out and ran up inside of him and just almost broke it all the way. Dan Miller was the young man who finally made the stop for Arkansas State as the ball is sitting on about the six-yard line. We've got the short yardage offense in now. Two big running backs back there to block for Gerald. And the give is going to be to Gerald. Gerald squeezes inside the five-yard line. He's easily got that Gerald first down, and it looks like everybody in the world came up, and probably Charlie Frederick in there somewhere to make the stop. Once again, they're going to whistle it dead to see if that's a first down. They may call the chains in or what? No, they're not. It's going to be third down, third down and about a foot. As they set the ball right inside the three-yard line. Georgia Southern up by a score of three to nothing. They've got a good crowd here. You're going to be seeing all the signs around. One sitting right in front of us says, y'all can't beat grits or ham. And there you see how close the football is. Tracy is going to give it to Gerald. Gerald dives. He's at least got the first down. Diving Gerald Harris. First and goal, Georgia Southern. Offensive line did a good job not letting that defensive line penetrate to what they're trying to do, trying to get into our backfield. Offensive line so small for Georgia Southern, but they seem to push opponents around like they're on roller skates. Dennis Franklin, the center, 
The guards are Charles Cochran and Sean Ganey. The tackles are Fred Stokes and Ronald Warnock. And they just do an outstanding job. And a lot of them young men from right in our viewing area. As Tracy brings them up first and goal. Georgia Southern up three to nothing. Let's make it nine to nothing. Gerald Harris slices in off right tackle. Nine to nothing, Georgia Southern. Bill, that was a great drive. It was indeed, and it's going to be Tim Foley coming on to make the kick after the touchdown. We hope. At one point, he had the longest uh, streak in NCAA Division I AA history going. As you watch Gerald go in from the right side and Foley puts it up, it's perfect. There's time out on the field. Georgia Southern 10 and Arkansas State nothing. We'll be back right after we pause for this. Hey, Gerald, tell everybody, hey, in Swainsboro. Welcome back to the Tacoma Dome. Here is that touchdown one more time. The give to Gerald Harris. Gerald Harris going off the right side and into the end zone. Georgia Southern up by a score of 10 to nothing over Arkansas State. Michael Adams deep to receive. Rob Witten's kickoff. Nay Young checking things out as he gets ready to signal the special teams. Witten boots it away. Another beauty coming over to get it is Adams. Adams fumbles the ball at the five-yard line, picks it back up, dances around, he fumbles it again, and knocked down Taz Dixon is going to knock him down right there at about the two-yard line. It's Georgia's, could have been Georgia Southern's ball there very quickly, but Arkansas State's going to have it deep in a hole at the two-yard line as Adams could not get the handle on it. Watch it. Adams comes down, lets it go right through his hands, bounces off a thigh pad, tries to pick it up, loses it again. Turns around and just has to dive on it as Taz Dixon was there about a half a second before it was Georgia Southern's football first and goal at the two, Bucky. I'm sure that Arkansas State feels like this has to be just a guts all out drive for them now to come out of there. And I know defensively we've just got to stop them and keep them back in there and make them punt. Dwayne Brown brings him up and he goes straight up the gut. There's a big give and a big play, the play that we said that they needed. As Arkansas right, State's going to give it away. That's now, that's their new fullback. That's Jamison. Jamison hasn't played in the last two games. Um, in the playoffs, he's averaging 10 yards a carry. And he just came into the game. He has been injured, didn't play the first two series, look and he's at, back to Sparkle. Look at that hole that he's got there. Ricky Jamison, big pickup outside the 20-yard line, almost 18 yards, first and 10. Flags go down as Jamison gets the call again. Again, he's got big yardage, but it may all come back. Procedure or something? Uh, no, Bucky, that's, that's going to be offsides in Georgia Southern. Aha. Uh -huh. yeah. Georgia Southern is offside. He certainly took two big chunks of yardage. They really did. That's the fullback that we have to stop. Offsides for Georgia Southern. And they're going to decline the penalty. I believe. According to the referee, Gary Peters. And they'll decline, of course. First down. Big pickup on the play. Well, the ball game begins, Bill. Now we've got to them they have some momentum. We've got to stop Jamison. They've moved it from the two to the 36 in two plays, both of them by Jamison. Things can happen in a, happen in a hurry with a wishbone. Here's a new defense by Georgia Southern. Southern sort of shifting around there. Not too many people back. A bunch of folks on the line. Just about everybody on the line. The fake is to Jamison. The pitch is going to go around the outside to Whiteside. Whiteside gets maybe a yard or two. Boris Whiteside taking the pitch, and they're going to spot it about the 37-yard line before Brad Bowen stops him. We it's jumped into a new defense to stop the wishbone. We still haven't stopped Jamison yet. Uh, quarterback got a misread, which we were hoping he would get, and came out, and we had the play covered pretty well. Dwayne Brown brings him up. Second down, nine. Brown back. straight back to pass. Complete. Outside, and he gets away. Fred Barnett was the guy who caught the pass for another first down for Arkansas State. That's what we call a throwback pass. They sprint out one way, stop and turn around, and he's looking for the split end on a curl. He's got the halfback on a on a on a wheel down the sideline. Tough Barnett. pass to cover in his own defense. 
Four minutes and 30 seconds to go in the first quarter. 10 nothing the score, Georgia Southern. And the give is going to be on a little bit of a reverse to Whiteside. Whiteside gets outside. He's got good yardage down to the 30 to the 25 before Nay Young can finally stop him. And Young finally brings him down after a pickup of some 20, 30 yards almost on the play. Almost 30 yards as Whiteside goes rolling down here. Right side of their offensive line did an excellent job of, of moving us out of there. As a you can beautiful, see. a beautiful fake. Everybody went left and then everything came back to the right and Whiteside made a nice run, almost 30 yards. We've the ball is resting right outside the 20 yard line. First down. The give is gonna go right up the middle and there's that big guy, number 43, Ricky Jamison. He's gonna pick up about eight, nine yards on the play. They're gonna give him almost eight yards. Being second down and two, Robert Underwood finally made the stop for Georgia Southern. They see him set down again. That deadly wishbone. Jamison's got it okay. off the left side. He's got the first down inside the 15. Down to about the 14 yard line. First down, Arkansas State. Eagles just have to pull it back together right now and get tough. It is very, very difficult sometimes to figure out this wishbone as you watch the replay. They give right to Jamison. Watch the beautiful blocking inside. He gets sandwiched in there. Georgia Southern defenders, Donnie Allen among them. Georgia Southern leading 10 to nothing with three and a half minutes to go in the first quarter. But Arkansas State trying to change all that. As Brown is changing a play at the line of scrimmage. Wants to make sure everybody knows it. Bethel High School Band trying to help out all they can. The pitch is going to go around the right side to white side. Touchdown. Here's your player for Georgia Southern on the play. James Wildman Carter was taken out of there on a block. They came in with a load option that time. The front side halfback took James Carter out of the play. And what, see, what? It, see it coming right there. The block right there knocked him down. He had the quarterback. That forced the... Uh, Danny Durham to take the quarterback and when our, our safety didn't get up in there and our corner didn't close on it fast enough. And a beautiful drive and a fast drive. 3.08 to play and the score is 10 to 6. The place kicker Scott Roper comes in to try to make it 10-7 and he does. 10-7 the score. Georgia Southern is in the lead by 3. 3.08 to go in the first period and we'll be back. Delano Little, who had a little bit of a bru bruised foot. We've got dual split ends now as Tracy goes back to pass, avoiding a rush. Fires way downfield, a wide open Monty Sharp. Monty Sharp down at the 40-yard line before Elbert Shelley can rack him up just inside or right on the 40-yard line. Vincent Barnett and Elbert Shelley combined to knock Monty Sharp down. First down for Georgia Southern. Pick up about 25, 30 yards on the play. That was a great job by Monty. Now, Monty is supposed to run the post here, but the, the weak safety was over, didn't go, didn't come with the fake, and Monty curled up in the curl down about 20 yards in front of that free safety. You see him right there with number three behind him. The play was designed to beat number three deep, but Tracy scrambled, and Monty saw that he didn't have him beaten, curled up inside. All right, Tracy brings him up. It's first down at the Arkansas State 40, and the give's gonna go to Gerald Harris. He dances off that right side and gets about five yards down to the 35-yard line where it'll be second down and five. 38 seconds to play in the first quarter. 10-7 the score, Georgia Southern. Bill, that play surprised me because we started the man in the motion up at the top of the picture, and usually we we're going to come to the left, and we gave it back to Gerald Harris back to the right. I think that's the first time we've done that this year. Gerald is so beautiful in the way he can just sort of subtly change directions and dance around tacklers and would-be tacklers. It's incredible. Tracy checking something off at the line of scrimmage. One setback. Tracy's going to keep it. Goes inside. He's going to get near the 30-yard line. Very close to a first down after a pickup of about five yards before Don Palmer can wrap him up. And if that's not a first down, it is going to be within an inch or two. Five seconds to go here as they're going to come out and measure it. Five seconds to go in the first quarter, we should say. Herc Russell on the sidelines. Kneeling down watching this one. we got a dandy in Tacoma tonight. Heavens to Betsy, this really is going to be a good ball game. Well, Tracy had to fight for every yard, every yard he made that time. And they start the clock, and that's going to end the quarter. That's the end of the first quarter. Georgia Southern up by a score of 10 to 7. And we'll be back after this timeout.
Michaels are a super team working together. Tacoma, Washington. This is Bill Edwards along with Bucky Wagner bringing you the play-by-play -play tonight of the Georgia Southern game. Georgia Southern leading Arkansas State for the national championship by a score of 10-7. to We're about to have the first play of the first quarter. That was a first down as you get that shot from the end zone. Beautiful weather out here. Last year was nothing but fog. Bucky, I didn't know Mount Rainier was right in the backyard here. Isn't it beautiful, Tim? It is gorgeous. Well, you can see why it's a, why people love the Pacific Northwest. It is so beautiful out here. As the give is going to go straight ahead to Gerald Harris. Gerald's got big yardage as he gets 10, almost 15 yards up to the 15-yard line, near the 15-yard line, before Elbert Shelley can bring him down. And that is the explosiveness of Gerald Harris. The offensive line just did a great job. Again, that was a trap option. About a 13-yard yeah. run for Gerald. Watch this. You see our left guard come, pull, mm -hmm. trap. Beautiful work. Gerald Harris almost breaking it there. Trapped the wrong man, but it was a good play anyway. Well, what the heck. You with Gerald, you don't have to worry about that so much. First down for Georgia Southern. They give to Gerald Harris again. He almost got it outside. He got about three or four, maybe five yards before he was finally wrapped up over there by Ron Hillers. Number 90, the defensive tackle. Picked up almost, well, they're going to call it four yards. Going to be second down and six. There are the first quarter statistics. Georgia Southern 143 yards to 104 for Arkansas State. 45 yards passing for GSC as opposed to 10 for ASU. Rushing yardage 98 for Georgia Southern, 94 Arkansas State. Pretty close as is the score, 10-7 with just about 14 minutes to go in the first half. Just underway for the second quarter as Tracy Hamm is going to roll to his right and slips down, but he had a little help as he was wrapped up over there by number 46, Marvin Nelman of Memphis. Defensive end did a good job that time of getting some getting some depth and forced Tracy to turn up in a hurry and just kind of ruined the play. Tracy slipped down. I'm not sure he would have. I'm not sure he wouldn't have slipped anyway. Bucky it looked like he was losing his footage. Well, see, on. those are the people that were trapping, and that's why he came across that far. We had trapped him before. I guess we should have just trapped him again because he didn't sit in there. Didn't he? Didn't. Uh, Incredible imbalance in time of possession in the first half. We'll run down for you in just a moment as the ball is tipped. It was intended for Gerald Harris. Great defensive play over there by big number 69, Clint Ledbetter, out of Fort Smith, Arkansas. And that's going to bring on the field goal unit as was, Tim Foley is going to try to make it 13-7. to seven. That was just a little slip screen to, to Gerald, and it looked like it was there, but we got the ball tipped. Watch this. Little screen. You see the, the ball tipped. The... Uh, let Ledbetter knocked it harmlessly to the turf. Gerald couldn't get to it. Tim Foley comes in to attempt a 30-yard field goal. Monty Sharp is holding. You don't know how important those holders really are. Kick is up. No problem with that one. And there's timeout on the field. With 13 minutes and 18 seconds to go in the half, Georgia Southern is up by a score of 13 to 7. And we'll be back right after this. 13 to 7 is the score. Georgia Southern leading 13 18 to go in the half. As Rob Witten is set to kick it off for GSC, got a new man back deep. Earl Easley is the guy. He's listed as a quarterback on the program, standing right at the goal line. Maybe they didn't like the way Michael Adams handled the football the last time, Bucky. As I'd say you're right about that. As Witten gets Mr. this a terrible kick that goes straight up, and it's going to be taken by number nine, and he gets across the 25, maybe to the 28 yard line before Jeff. Um, Banks can bring him down. Number nine is Todd yeah. Horton. You look at the uh, kicking tee. The kicking tee is 20 yards down the field, and Rob Witten kicked the kicking tee instead of the ball that time. 12 plays, 77 yards, and four minutes and 44 seconds for the field goal by Tim Foley on the last scoring drive for Georgia Southern as you watch the Arkansas State cheerleaders on the far side of the field. In the Tacoma Dome in Washington. Weather a little colder this year, but a whole lot prettier. But it's 72 and clear inside the Tacoma Dome. That gives a little reverse and a trap type thing coming across over here for Arkansas State. That is Dennis Forrest that took it in, took it up to about the 35-yard line. Brad Bowen brought him down after a pickup of about seven yards, where it's going to be make it eight yards. Little halfback counter in there. They've got Jamison back in at fullback. Here's You'll the, see him carry the ball here's right the now. Replay. You watch that big hole in there, and Brad Bowen finally locks him up after about a seven-yard gain. He's second down and three. Okay. They're going to try it around the other side. Not going to be quite as successful. Just about everybody on the Georgia Southern defensive line. We moved down and tightened our defense that time, moved our tackles down on the tackles, and made ourselves a little stronger inside. Going to watch it again. 
is good on short yardage, but it. Here comes the give is going to be over to Whiteside, yeah. and he's wrapped up very well. Larry quickly. Boone did an awful good Larry, job that time. Yeah, Larry Boone. Real active guy. I put Larry Boone in on the offense. That short yardage stuff you're talking about, Bucky, as they bring right. him up to the line of scrimmage here. Third and about a yard. As Brown looks like he's going to keep it himself. Mm. As one guy hit him there, it looks like he had him in the backfield for a second. See Brad if we Bowen. get a good mark here. If we get a good mark, we may have stopped him. We it's sent to be him. fourth down. Well, well that's gonna a have great to play. Thomas Porter did a good job that time. We had a blitz on from the outside, and he got in to the quarterback in a hurry. Porter. Disrupted the option and caused the play to be stopped. Steve Sampson's coming in to punt. Tony Belzer will be deep for Georgia Southern. There you see him, number 21, standing at about the 21-yard line. And the punt is away. Good Pretty punt. high. Good punt. Going to be taken at the 20-yard line by Belzer. He dances around with no place to go. And he's going to be down at about the 22-yard line, where it'll be first and 10 for Georgia Southern. They're up by a score of 13 to 7 with 11-21 to play in the first half. Tracy Ham coming out into the field for GSC. This will be a big series here, Bill. Anytime we can get them to punt and get the ball back, we've got to be able to do something with it. Georgia Southern has won, I believe, all of their games this year in which they have scored first, and they were up by a score of 10 to nothing before Arkansas State came storming up the field. Go 97 yards and something like eight plays, I believe, as Tracy rolls over to his right, decides he's going to keep it, can't find anybody. Gets about three yards on the play. He's going to be rolled down at about the 26-yard line by Fred Barnes. Senior out of Memphis, 245-pound left tackle. We had a couple people open that time. Pick up of three Tracy. yards. Tracy missed the flat receiver. Maybe. He's looking down the field at the curl route. Tracy, not only an excellent player, but also an honor student, as I understand. Did he make Dean's list? Is that my understanding, Buck? Tracy does a good job in the classroom. He's a good, sound person. Second down and about six. They gave him a little bit more yardage than we thought. As Tracy's going to roll back to pass one more time. Right over the middle, wide open, Ricky Harris. Ricky Harris at the 40 down to the 35-yard line of Arkansas State before Vincent Barnett can rack him up. About 40 yards on the play. What we did, Bill, was we ran up the, you can see Tracy looking up the boundary line. The safety came over, and he threw back in the middle to Gerald Harris coming to where the safety had left to go over on the boundary. See four come back in the picture? Mm -hmm. Ricky Harris, that is. And Ricky Harris. Ricky getting it down. Tracy gonna... did a good job of reading the safety that time. He really did. Tracy brings him up. Delano Little split wide to the left. He gives straight up the middle to Gerald Harris. Gerald gets away from two people. Gerald Harris is going to break it down inside the 20 to the 18-yard line before Michael Adams can wrap him up. This is unbelievable, Bill. Pickup of about 15, 16 yards on the play, something along those lines. Gerald Harris has scored for Georgia Southern 73 Watch touchdowns, Watch that offensive I line believe. play. Look at Dennis Franklin push that middle guard. That middle guard is a great big play. The little Dennis Franklin just knocked him right over on his side. And Gerald got away from two people and got about five more yards out of the deal as Georgia Southern comes up to the line, first and 10 from about the 18-yard line. Gerald's going to dance off that left side for about two more yards. And it's going to be second down and maybe about uh, eight, maybe seven. Clint Ledbetter is a guy who wrapped him up. Looks like they made an adjustment and brought their tackles down hard that time and stopped that play. Already 13 rushes for Gerald Harris tonight for 70 yards. Nine and a half minutes to go in the second quarter. Georgia Southern up by a score of 13 to 7. Going for their second national championship. Glad you folks are with us tonight. We thank all of our sponsors as well. Tracy rolls to his left looking for somebody to throw it to. Monty's yeah. got it right out of bounds and there's a flag on the Throw play. the flag here for something. That's the, that's the receiver that Tracy missed down here on the other end with him when he broke open. What they have called sure they got the words back into him. What they have called pass interference? No, there couldn't be interference on that. I didn't no. think so either. We had a lineman down the field. How in the world could that have happened? I have no idea, but the Georgia Southern fans don't like it. Coach Lancewell doesn't look like he believes it either. That's a very costly penalty. 
I can't understand. Tracy's even going over to talk with the official on the play. Now, there I seems think what uh, I think what they've called is our wide receivers line up, and if both our wide receivers line up on the line of scrimmage, they're both ends, and the inside receiver that time was Monty Sharp. Now, oftentimes we'll move them up and back, but if they're both up within the line of scrimmage, within the yard of the line of scrimmage, then he is an el ineligible receiver as he went down the field to catch the football. Mm -hmm. And we do move those people back and forth every once in a while. Eligible receiver by the offense, loss of down, fourth down, third down. Third down, that's very costly. So, but I that's, think that's, that's precisely what happened because it couldn't have been one of our offensive linemen downfield. Yep, that's loss of down. That brings up third down and about 12. Moving the ball back outside the 20 yard line to about the 21. As Tracy's gonna go back and pass again. He's gonna get out of some trouble there. Rolling over to his right. Tracy's got some running room on the right side to the 15. Tracy to the 10. Tracy to the five. First down, Georgia Southern at the five yard line. As Tracy makes something out of nothing one more time before Don Palmer can bring him down. Vincent Barnett also went on the stop. They're going to mark it perhaps just outside the five-yard line at about the uh, six, just between the five and the six-yard line. Watch Tracy scramble just a, out of trouble. Just amazing. And uh, he's got that good speed to get him on the outside. Michael Adams trying to get him down there, and I think it was Adams who finally made that little diving tackle in there. Might have tripped him got, up. We've got the bone cruncher offense in there right now with Larry Boone and Wildman Carter in at the, at the halfback spots. Wildman Carter, a freshman out of Valdosta. Boy, do they have a good program. There goes Gerald Harris straight up the middle, and boy, has he got some power. As he gets inside the five near the three-yard line and just keeps those legs moving. This is just kind of piling Fanny's football. Just everybody jumps up in the pile <laughs> when you get down here. Just push them back. They're trying to penetrate. We're trying to push them back. The backs are trying to jump over top of everybody. It'll be second down and goal from about the just outside the three-yard line is where the football is spotted or right between the three and the four. Eight minutes and 12 seconds to go in the half. Georgia Southern up 13 to seven. As you watch Irk Russell on the sidelines, praying that they get this one in. Georgia Southern really needs a touchdown. You saw how explosive Arkansas State was. And there goes Gerald Harris getting the football, and he gets away after a couple of guys. I have, sure don't like that penalty flag. I it's don't right in the middle where they call holding. Gerald Harris to a And that's two, what could be very costly penalties here. Illegal procedure against Georgia Southern, not as bad as it could have been. No, have to get the uh, open field team back out on the field. Get the bone crushers out of there. So, you see the big guys coming off and the more svelte guys coming in. We say 7.55 to go. I can't stop them from my ball foul. Procedure by the offense before the snap. Repeat second down. So it'll now be second and goal from the eight and a half. This is a tough situation because we haven't really seen that much of the goal line defense down here, and we're going to have to rely on what we think they're going to be doing. Tracy Ham brings him up. He's got Gerald Harris behind him and Herman Barron in motion to the left. Tracy going to try the quarterback draw, and he's going to get stacked up for practically no gain. Clint Ledbetter had him. We've got to come out of here with a touchdown. Really need something at this point. Seven and a half minutes to go in the second quarter. 13 to seven, Georgia Southern. We anticipated a man coverage there, and, and there really weren't in man coverage. If And Tracy was going to come out here and pitch it to Gerald Harris down the sideline of their man coverage, then we'd take their... their their uh, corner coverage away from by running the, running the receiver into the back of the end zone. Splitting wide to the left, Tony Belzer, Gerald Harris, the setback, and Tracy decides he's going to call a timeout. He didn't like what he saw. And with a timeout on the call. field, there are seven minutes and one second to play in the second half. Georgia Southern's up by a score of 13 to 7. We'll be right back. Back to the great Pacific Northwest, Tacoma, Washington. We're glad to be here. Bill Edwards along with Bucky Wagner. Seven minutes, one second to go. It's third down and goal for Georgia Southern at about the eight-yard line. And in motion to the right is Delano Little and Tracy Ham going back there to is, pass. There he is. Oh, Tracy. And Tracy's going to fire right over the middle, and it's knocked down as Delano got open momentarily. But Tracy just saw him late. He was open early. He was open early, and Tracy, by the time Tracy reacted to it, so did the, did the defense. Michael Adams had come back. And Delano Little was wide open. If you watch Tracy, 
He's looking over there to his right. Cannot see, I believe, over Dan Miller in there. And Michael Adams came over and just made a beautiful play. And Tim Foley's going to try to make the score 16 to 7. As the hold is down and the kick is up, and it is good. But it's Pat Parker who was holding this time instead of Monty Sharp. And there's going to be timeout on the field. Six minutes and 53 seconds to go in the first half. Georgia Southern is up by a score of 16 to 7. We'll be back in Tacoma, Washington, right after we pause for this. Seven minutes to play in the first half of this one. Deep to receive. Rob Witten's kickoff is Earl Easley. Witten, a bad one last time. This one almost similar. Goes way up and not very deep as it's going to be taken there by Ricky Kimball. And Ricky's going to get up to the 35-yard line across to the 36. And so the defense is going to be defending about a 70-yard field here. David Hodge, the linebacker. And Taz Dixon in there as well. According to the PA announcer, we saw David Hodge first, okay? So Georgia Southern goes 77 yards in nine plays, but they can't convert into a touchdown. Tim Foley from Miami comes in to kick the field goal. Five minutes and 22 seconds consumed on the clock, and Georgia Southern's had the football just about all night, maybe with the exception of about four or five minutes, and the give is going to go inside to Jemison. Well, that's just too much, Bill. We've got to stop that fullback before he can make four yards. Brad Bowen's the guy who brings him down. And Jemison's going to get about five yards on the play. It's going to be second down and five. Their offensive line is doing an awfully good job against us. These the guys are ranked number one in the country. And they run an excellent wishbone as the give is going to go to Jemison again. And he's going to get very close to first down yardage as he gets about four yards anyway. He's finally stopped at the five yard line, 45 yard line, I should say, by Edward Eaves. Clint Matthews had a shot at him, but missed him there. Let's hope we can have another great third down play. Six minutes to go in the first half. Georgia Southern up 16 to 7. If they do anything but give it to Jamison, they should not make it. <laughs> is Jamison how he pronounces it? It's J-E-M-I-S-O-N. And the give is going to go to Jamison. But boy, I want to tell you, Robert Underwood out of Statesboro came submarining in there. And that was all she wrote. As you see, Flint Matthews in there and also uh, Edward Eaves. That and was that's going to bring up fourth down another big play. That was a good defensive call. We shift defenses there in center linebacker. And Robert Underwood he was able to beat the guard through that guard tackle gap and made the tackle. Robert Underwood. That was kid. just a missed assignment on their part. Guess to kid who stayed home. Great defensive call. You folks in Statesboro can really be proud of him. Flint Matthews in Sarah from Lincolnton. And a beautiful, beautiful. punt downfield is going to back Tony Belzer up. He's going to call for a fair catch at the five-yard line. It's going to be first down for Georgia Southern. And a long way to go. Five minutes and ten seconds to play in the first half as you see Tracy Ham. I think Tony Belson forgot where he was on the field, and once he passed that ten yard line, he should have let that ball go. For sure. But when you're running backwards and looking up in the air, sometimes you just don't know where you are. Larry Boone on the sideline getting some talk from Coach Russell. Also Donnie Allen. Irk's been called a defensive genius, yet he's got an offensive machine that is just out of this world. And we're going to see how well they do at this point. First and ten from the five for Georgia Southern. The give is going to go. No, Tracy's going to keep it. He's going to dance up to about the nine-yard line and pick up of about four yards on the play, where it'll be second down and six before Don Palmer out of Brandon, Mississippi, brings him down. Those Arkansas State players look awfully big. They're, our coaches feel like they're the best defense we've played against since the University of Florida. I think they're probably right. We'll hope that we can continue to move the football. Won't get any argument. We want to thank everybody for joining us on the Lewis Sports Network tonight. As we've got second down and six, Tracy Ham is going to roll to his right to pass. Fires way up the field, and he just fell down. That was intended over there for... Tony Belzer, was it? Or was it 80? No, that's, that was Darren Chandler. Darren Chandler. They had the pass open. They were in his own coverage. And because of Tracy, they've taken their front side linebacker now and have got him containing Tracy as a secondary contain. And that takes the linebacker out from underneath the, the curl route and leaves just the cornerback and, and, the, uh, and the wide receiver. And that, that route will be open. Now you saw what Georgia Southern had done on the four possessions that they've had the football so far. This is possession number five they bring it up it's going to be third down and six big third down situation for GSC 
We have not punted tonight. So far, Belzer goes in motion to the left. Tracy looking for somebody to throw it to. Way upfield. It's going to be complete to Ricky Harris. Ricky Harris catches it across the 35 to the 37-yard line. Big pickup on the play, and of course, automatically, that's first down before Greg Lee can finally stop him. That's just unbelievable. Tracy was under a lot of pressure from the end here. Look back, look the safety over to the right, and threw back across to the... Look how wide open Ricky Harris is, too. Or Lee can finally bring him down. Ricky Harris, the senior out of Harlan, Georgia. That was a great third down play. Georgia Southern has come up with some spectacular third down plays this season, which has gotten them here. And could be one of the reasons they might take home that second trophy. Tracy back to pass again. A beautiful pitch down there across the 45 to about the 47 yard line. Delano Little, the kid with a bruised foot. A diving catch. Shelly Elbert, they say, is going to bring him down, but actually Delano would have fallen down anyway. That diving catch that he made, but watch how beautiful this thing really that's is. Just, that's just as pretty as could be. You see it's right between the corner, number four, and the safety coming over there. The corner is coming up to stop the option, and we just slip in behind him, and the safety can't get over from the high smoke in time to make the play. Delano Little, kid that says he might like to make a career out of broadcasting. Delano, come on up and join us next week. First and 10, Georgia Southern at the Arkansas State 45-yard line to give to Gerald Harris straight ahead for about three yards. Ron Hillers is the guy, defensive tackle, that brings him down. You watch Gerald Harris get out of that pile. There's a kid like that Timex watch. Bucky takes a licking and keeps on ticking. <laughs> he, he takes some shots in there. He did a good job there. It's going to be second down, and let's call it seven. Short seven, anyway. Ball just on the 41-yard line of Arkansas State. This drive started at the five. Second down seven, Tracy Ham rolling to his left, wants to pass. He's got some running room. He's going to try to get outside. He's to the 35, to the 30. Pick up of about 12 yards on the play before he's run out of bounds by Don Palmer over there on the side. Tracy, get up. Thank you. <laughs> just sheer quickness. He was out there, and the man had a good shot at him in the open field, and just outran them all. Incredible. Georgia Southern is keeping the ball. Eventually, it's got to take a toll on that defense because they've had the ball, I would say, probably 15 minutes or more, or 20 minutes or more. Well, let's now. say we're going to find out where they're lined up. We'll have enough time to, to look and see where the defense <laughs> is going to be. First down for Georgia Southern on the 31. The ball just outside the 31-yard line. Dennis Franklin centering it up out of Hoganville. The give is going to go to Gerald Harris. Boy, he explodes out of that backfield of the 25-yard line. Pickup of about six yards on the play, maybe five. Be second down and five before Ron Hillers can trip him up. Just got tripped. Hillers is the guy who has come in He's here. He's coming out of there, too. He's limping Gerald just a something. little bit as he comes over on the side. Gerald, take a breather. You deserve it. Second down and five. Eric Russell going over to say something. The trainer is going to look at Gerald on the sidelines. We'll keep, keep you posted. Two minutes, 20 seconds to go in the half. Georgia Southern up 16 to 7. As Tracy Ham calls him off, it's going to be second down and five. Drops the football, picks it back up, and maybe makes a half a yard. Goes across the 25-yard line, where it's going to be third down and about four and a half, maybe. Another big third down play. Yep. Gary Miller is coming in. Ross Warsham was in for a moment. He comes back out. Gary Miller's the backup for Gerald Harris. Has had a good year. He's the kind of guy you like coming in to, to play for you. Big, tall kid. Got a blitz coming. Got Runs a blitz with a lot coming. of power. All right, all right. Read the blitz perfectly. All right, Tracy all right. Tracy Hamm to the five. Tracy Hamm, touchdown. Just a great, Great play. That's the first time that they've blitzed against us all night long. We caught them in the blitz, broke the quarterback free. When you do that, there's no safety in there. The safety's up playing man-to-man. -man. There's nobody back there, and Tracy was able to do it. I don't know. We must have ESP to have gotten that play on against that defense. Look here. There's That's no right. safety back there. Broke it through. It's over. Beautiful block over there by Sean Ganey, a freshman. Monty Sharps back into hole. Tim Foley is going to try to make it 23 to 7. Here it comes, and it is good. Georgia Southern 23, Arkansas State 7. A minute. Earl Easley is going to take it 
up to about the 23-yard line. Excellent, excellent coverage by the KKK group. That was the KKK, as Eric calls them, the crazy Great. kick coverers. Here you see Terry Young out of Savannah. Watch Terry. Terry's going to come outside and haul him down. 125 to go in the first half. 23 to 7 is the score. Georgia Southern in the lead. Tracy Ham just scored a touchdown on a quarterback draw as Dwayne Brown goes back to pass. Going to try right over the middle and almost intercepted. Beautiful play coming over there by big number 19 for Georgia Southern. That's Warren L. Anthony. Anthony tips that one out of harm's way. I love, scoring, the, love to see them when they get out of the wishbone. Scoring drive for Georgia Southern. Nine plays. They went 95 yards. Four minutes and 37 seconds in the 25-yard touchdown run by Tracy Ham. A minute 19 to go in the half. 23 to 7, Georgia Southern ahead. Second down and 10. Dwayne Brown going to catch it back. And nobody's there to pick it up. And finally, Brown's going to be knocked down at about the nine-yard line. He went to pitch it back back there to big number 24, Dennis Forrest. Forrest, very poorly executed play as Wesley Lee came over and said, let's us have a timeout with a minute four to play. Thank it's going to be third down. Yeah. When they're in the black. And picking it up was Dwayne Brown. He saved him there. It would have been Georgia Southern's football at the nine-yard line otherwise. There you see Irk Russell on the sidelines. A minute and four seconds to go. In the first half, that is. 23 to 7 is the score. Georgia Southern in the lead. But there is still a lot of time to play. The beautiful wide shot of this Tacoma Dome. I imagine this place could get real noisy if this uh, if it filled up. I know um, we were out here last year, Bucky, we went over to the Dome on Friday night uh, when the Seahawks were um, were playing and uh, boy that place really is noisy well this our fans you can hardly hear ourselves now but just our fans in front of us that's right they they have really we might not have a whole lot of people here but we've got a very well represented crowd for having to come about 3,500 miles from Statesboro and Savannah Vidalia Metter we've got them here folks Thanks. They are the most enthusiastic individuals I've ever been around. Ain't it the truth? We've got a lot of great parties I know going on in Statesboro tonight. We appreciate everybody tuning in here on the Lewis Sports Network as well. Thank you, and we want to thank our sponsors. You know, it's very difficult. Some people don't realize for uh, sponsors to come up with, uh, with money for games on the spur of the moment like this. Christmas season when the budgets are spent. First of the year coming up in a couple of weeks. Dwayne Brown going back to pass. From his own end zone. Screen. He'll fire it out there. A little bit of a screen and stumbling down his white side. He couldn't quite get his footing. And Georgia Southern wants to call timeout again because that's going to bring up fourth down. And about eh, 20. <clears throat> fourth down and 15, 17, something along those lines. They have to get to the 33-yard line to get a first down. <laughs> Tony Belzer back deep to receive the punt. Steve Sampson will be punting from his own goal line. 53 seconds to play. These guys are losing their footing on that AstroTurf out there. And this is the first time that Arkansas State has played on AstroTurf this year. The very first time they've played inside ever. 23 to 7, Georgia Southern in the lead. There's less than a minute to go in the first half. Belzer standing back on about is uh, 47 or so. Getting ready to receive this. Make that the 42. As they get ready to punt it away. Oh, beautiful. It's a good one. Punt. Good hang time. Belzer is just going to call for a fair catch at the 48-yard line. But Tracy Ham and company have 45 seconds to do something. And Tracy Ham has been known to do a lot of things in 45 seconds. One more time is the call. We're going to be showing you at halftime just how Georgia Southern got here. All of their victories this season will be running them down. The highlights of the 1986 season as they try to repeat as national champions. And they're leading it 23 to 7 at this point with 45 seconds to go as Tracy Ham comes up to the line. 
This is their sixth possession of the first half. I believe they've scored every time they've had the football. Tracy rolling to his right. Can't find anybody. Fires way across the field. It's going to be oh, in and out of the hands of Arkansas State defender. That's Elbert Shelley, who almost had that one. I thought he had it. I think he thought he had it. And yeah, we were trying to throw back to the other side of the field, and then Tracy got rushed and had to scramble and came out of there and really had to throw the ball off balance. Probably should have been that top, one. Up the top of the screen, the curl and the, the route there, the guy wide open in the middle. But then we just got rushed and didn't have time to. Tracy overthrows stop. him a little bit there. and Would have been nice if we could have caught that tipped ball. Would have been. Tracy brings him back up. It's going to be second down and 10. Tracy rolling off to his left. Wants to pass again. Pass is going to be complete to Delano Little down the sidelines. He's at the 35. Inside the 35 to about the 32-yard line is where they're going to spot it. And that's definitely within Tim Foley's range here. 29 seconds to go. Greg Lee is the guy who knocks Delano Little down. 29 seconds to play in the first half. Georgia Southern up 23 to 7. Tracy Ham has completed 7 of 12 passes tonight. We should have one timeout left. I believe we took two. We may be out of timeouts. We took one early. We may be out of timeouts. I can't tell from the scoreboard. We can't see the scoreboard here. No, we can't. But it's 29 seconds to play, and I'm not sure that they've got it up there as Tracy Ham there rolls around and fires Delano Little and right through his hands. He put a little too much English on that one. And it's incomplete. It's going to be second down and 10 from the 32-yard line and 25 seconds to go. They sit back in the zone in this situation, and that curl route is good. Uh, they play a cautious zone, and that's what they're doing right now. We've got a chance, if we can get a couple more downs, we've got a chance to move it down in there and, and, and get a chance to throw it in the end zone. If nothing else, Tim Foley has been known to kick him in practice for 70 yards, as long as I believe was 56 for Georgia Southern. Tracy is going to keep it himself. Tracy at the 30 to the 25 to the 20. Tracy to the 15 and out of bounds at the 15 yard line with 17 seconds to play. And Tracy Ham just <laughs> just a beautiful well, move. Just a beautiful move. What can we say? They're really trying to put pressure on that time. The defensive end jumped right over the our blocker. There are no Tracy adjectives. outmaneuvered him. Tracy outmaneuvers everybody. We got the curl route on, but they're in a man-to-man -man coverage with their underneath people that time with the safety in behind them. 17 seconds to go. Look there for a vertical see. route. Look for uh, <coughs> Herman Barron right up the head. Right. Tracy, back to pass. Looking, still looking. Fires, incomplete. The pass receiver. He was over the line of scrimmage when he threw the ball. I'm pretty certain. I think you're right, Bucky. Yeah, that's the signal. Tracy has that sixth sense, and that one time it didn't pay off, but there have been several times when I thought he was over the line of scrimmage, Bucky, before he released that thing, but... Well, he just waited and waited and waited that time, and he just got too far down the field. We've got a chance to throw it in the end zone one more time, and then we're going to have to probably kick it. So cross your fingers for the Eagles. I guess without the time they are with no, no timeouts time left the illegal break. forward pass by the offense carries loss of down second down and there you hear from referee Gary Peters the grim story there so Monty Sharp comes in to hold it for Tim Foley Foley will try a 36 yarder and we'll see what happens that one's up should be good he's got it and with six seconds to play in the half Foley is four for four tonight, and the score is 26 to seven in favor of Georgia Southern. And only six seconds to play in the first half of this ball game. Well, yeah. all you think, all you think of right now, Bill, is, is we got another half to play. They scored 98 yards, two minutes and 50 seconds. Uh, Any time they can get the momentum back and get it going, they, we've we've got a little better than a three touchdown bulge. <laughs> well, you just never safe until it's over. No, absolutely just, not. Uh, God, how many offense. times have we learned that lesson? Oh, um, I remember right here last year, one team was down in the middle of the third quarter, was down 28 to six. Isn't that the Came truth? Came back and won the ball game. Yes, that was us. We know oh so well. Last week in Reno, it looked like that one was out of reach. 
And those guys kept coming back. We would hope, we would hope that we can get them out of their wishbone attack and get them throwing the football and get them doing some things that they don't like to do. It'll be they won't they won't try to do that. They will come back if they're smart and we know they're smart. They'll come back and try to run the same attack that got them the 98 yards. If we stop that and can break the bone and get them throwing the ball, then I'm going to feel a lot better. Tim Foley's kicking off instead of Rob Whitten. He's got a low one that's going to be taken. It's going to be fumbled and they're going to try to recover it. It's kicked around and finally kicked out of bounds. No, Georgia Southern, I believe, is going to have it, but there's time no time left out. on the clock. And that was exciting. We came close to having a second left on the clock. But that's going to be it for the first half. And that makes the score 26 to 7. We're going to be back in just a moment. And we're also going to be telling you about how Georgia Southern got here. But first, we're going to pause for this. And is out there entertaining at halftime. And the folks who brought us some luck last year. Back here, Bill Edwards along with Bucky Wagner. And uh, Bucky, it's been uh, an interesting first half. Georgia Southern getting down there. And of course, they've scored. Tim Foley, four for four. That is a playoff record, by the way, in field goals. Good. I hope he gets about four more in the second half. And I hope our defense continues to play. They made two great third down plays in that, th in that half and got the ball back to our offense, and that's just so critical. That offense of Arkansas State just has me scared to death, though. They, they went 98 yards in two minutes and 55 seconds and, and multiplied two minutes and 55 seconds and divided into 30, and they're still, they're still <laughs> in the ball game. They're still... I think that we have them right now pretty well subdued, but all that momentum can change, and you've seen how they can come out and get after us. We've got to play awfully hard. We're going to get the ball back in the, in the kickoff at the second half. We've got to take that down and score and hopefully get them to where they can break out of their running attack and start to open up their offense and try to throw the football. If they do that, then they're doing what they don't do as well as they do running, and I think they will have a better chance. The only way to beat Georgia Southern, and probably the best way to beat Georgia Southern, is the way East Carolina did it, keep the offense off the field. They had right. that big fullback they just kept giving it to. He made four or five yards on the plays and uh, kept the ball away from our offense because our offense can score. They sure did. We had the ball against East, East Carolina eight times in the whole game. That's four times a, a half. We scored six times. And they played a perfect football game against us. They certainly did. And um, the score is 26 to 7 at halftime. And we're going to be back to tell you just exactly how Georgia Southern got here. Right. Georgia Southern is going to receive. Georgia Southern will receive the second half kickoff because they won that first half coin toss and deferred the option. That's right. We've got to get the ball back and just play good football. Georgia Southern up by a score of 26 to 7. Tim Foley, 4 for 4, a new playoff record. The record he broke was his own. The one he set last year when he was 3 for 3 here. Let's hope he can be 10 for 10. That would be nice. But Georgia Southern is going to have to, you know, Paul Johnson, as we mentioned earlier, the fantastic offensive coordinator for Georgia Southern, said that we probably have to kick a lot of field goals tonight. And so far, we have kicked four. So 12 of those points tonight have come on field goals. And getting ready to kick it away for Arkansas State is Frank Richards. That's a new kicker, I believe. Let's go, Eagles. So Richards, and finally, it's going to be picked up. A Jeter. And by Jeter. By Jeter. Keith Jeter. And he's going to swing around and come out to about the 22-yard line. I always have to catch that kick off in the air. Yeah. Ricky should have Ricky, come on there. Ricky should have um, played that one a little bit better. you got to remember that that is a live football, unlike a punt. That can get you in a lot of trouble very quickly as Tracy Ham comes back onto the field. First and 10 for Georgia Southern from the 23-yard line, I believe, is where they put it, or nose of the football resting right at the 23. See Gerald Harris back in the football game. Gerald back in there at fullback. The give is going to be to Gerald. Gerald's going to go straight up the middle, and he gets maybe two yards. Gerald Harris for a game of about two. Poor we'll Clint Ledbetter wraps him up. Second down and eight, Georgia Southern. Second half just underway. GSC in the lead, 26 to 7. Bill, I think Monty Sharp, we haven't seen him for about a quarter. I believe he has a pulled hamstring. I see his, his thigh is all taped up. He is back out on the field. We just hope that he'll be able to get back in the football game. He is a very, very valuable person to have. Delano Little out split wide to the right. Ross Warsham 
also split. And the pass is going to be to Warsham. Warsham catches a pass, and that's up to about the 44-yard line before Greg Lee can knock him down. It's going to be first down for Georgia Southern. Again, pick up about 15 yards. Russell right up the right up the boundary, and uh, Tracy really snapped that ball in there. Really threw it hard and got it in there before the safety and could get over to cover. He did. 18-yard pickup for GSC. It's going to be a first down. 26 to 7 the score. Third quarter just underway. Like we've just used up a minute of it. Tracy checking off at the line of scrimmage. Boy, he can read defenses incredibly well. Give us to Gerald Harris, but that one didn't work very well as Fred Barnes and uh, a what they say as they say a host of Arkansas State tacklers that's there to just, greet him. That's just not a good sign. We didn't block anyone that time. And uh, the middle guard's awfully good, and they got help from the backside tackle on that. Uh, Gerald made the proper cut in behind the middle guard, but the backside tackle came down and made the play. We've got to move them off the line of scrimmage. We can't let Tracy do it all. So Tracy brings them up where it's going to be second down and eight. Tracy's going back to pass. He gets away from one person. He throws it over. It's complete to Herman Barron across to the 37-yard line, I believe, before Anthony Withers can get him down. They'll mark it at the 37 of Arkansas State. First down, Georgia Southern. Bill, this is just getting too exciting for me. <laughs> Tracy looks to the left, turns back, and gets his Herman coming underneath the coverage on the backside. Beautiful play there by Herman Barron as Anthony Withers knocks him down. Another first down for GSC. Incredible time of possession so far tonight. The give is going to go straight ahead to Gerald Good Harris. Time. He just runs over people, stepping across a few folks here and there. Passing got them loosened up a little bit there, and our offensive line did a better job that time. We've just got to be able to maintain that fullback attack. Anthony Withers knocked him down. It looks like about a six-yard gain there for Gerald, moving it up to the 31-yard line. It's going to be second down and six. Sean Ganey, number 51. You see him in there, a freshman on the line. See number 69, their right tackle Ledbetter just went out with an injury. Second and six. Tracy's going to keep him. Tracy, Tracy at the 30. Tracy at the 25 and 20. Tracy, 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 touchdown. Just a beautiful play. Touchdown, Tracy Ham. 12 11 to play in the third period. 32 to 7 is the score. Watch it again. Tracy on the option, turned up and just outran them right here. Got a nice block in there by Herman Barron. And it's all over but the shouting. Tracy Ham. The guy that nobody wanted. We took a time out to just discuss whether or not we want to try a two-point conversion, two conversion here. conversion here. We uh, 25 points. In the first half, I wish that I was smart enough to know <laughs> what the <laughs> what the philosophy is right here. There is a scale that the coaches have that show them when they should go for two and when they should not go for two. And obviously, 25 points spread is one of those times when you when you go for two. I've never been ahead that far going for two. <laughs> so, yeah, I understand. Tracy Ham, as you watch him, you're going to see him. Back it up and everything is what you're going to see. <laughs> Ever want to see a tape go backwards, folks? That was it. That was Tracy getting the touchdown called back is what that was. Or running it backwards. 32 to 7 is the score. Looks like they're going to go for the two-point conversion. We've rushed 35 times tonight as Georgia Southern for 221 yards so far against a team that's giving up how much on, on defense, uh, Bucky? Well, certainly not that much. Yeah, <laughs> you're right. <laughs> they have been uh, giving up about 10 points a game. And uh, they're about 22 behind there so right the, now. So the two-point conversion for GSC, it's 32 to 7, 12 11 to play. I hope this doesn't make Arkansas State mad or something. Well, I just <laughs> hope we can continue to play hard. Delano Little is going to come in motion left. 
Tracy's going to go rolling right to pass. He's going to fire Good. right wide open. Is Herman Barron for the two-point conversion, 34 to seven, Georgia Southern. Herman Barron caught that one. Tracy didn't hesitate a lick. He fired that one into the end zone, and Georgia Southern is up by a score of 34 to seven with 12 minutes, 11 seconds to play in the third quarter. I'm just so pleased to see Tracy have the kind of game he's having right now, and I just hope that we can hang in there and play good defense and get the ball back. Ladies and gentlemen, you are seeing something very, very special. Tracy Ham in his final game, and so is Gerald Harris and Chris Aiken and a lot of young men I see out there, but watch Tracy Ham as just, he's going to score that touchdown again. It just gives me chills. As you see, the last, the last time he's going to play in a Georgia Southern uniform, and he is. Let's hope that we can watch him play for many years to come in the professional ranks. If the NFL doesn't go after this guy, they're dumber than even I thought they were. There you see Irk on the sidelines applauding. You gotta love it. You gotta love him. I don't think anybody could have done it with this program but him. Rob Witten kicks it. It's high, not very deep. Running under it, taking it to 15 to the 20. Yeah. Across the 25 to the 30 in a 70-yard field that the defenders are going to have to defend. Beasley returns it. Wesley Lee made the tackle. Wesley Lee is one of the leaders in our kickoff coverage. Extremely intense. Six plays for Georgia Southern. 77 yards, 2 minutes and 42 seconds. Ham on the touchdown run. 12 minutes and 6 seconds to play in the third quarter. 34 to 7 the score. Georgia Southern leading in Arkansas State with Dwayne Brown at the helm. Two for four tonight, 50%. Brown back to pass. They know they've got to do something, a little screen. Over there on the right side, Red Well, I believe oh, Clint Matthews had him. Something happened over there with either a clipping or maybe a face mask. Yeah, it, may, it may have been an inadvertent face mask. I thought I saw his hand way up around the helmet. So See that's going to help him out a little bit. Face mask. I believe Flint had him around. Let's see the replay here. Watch Flint. Flint's got him. But again, it's an inadvertent face mask. I mean, he didn't even, <laughs> he hardly touched it. Picky, picky, picky. Here they come back out with a wishbone. We can expect them to come running at us right now. So that's going to help a lot. It's going to be first and five. Oh, now. And great boy. job by Flint Matthews. Flint decided, great job. Flint decided no more Mr. Nice Guy as he grabbed Richard Kimball. Wasn't he a, the fugitive at one time? Uh, I would like to see Richard. that one again. <laughs> There's Tracy. Tracy on the sidelines, 185 yards. Still passing, only second down. 156 yards rushing, 341 yards offense for Tracy tonight. Dwayne Brown back to pass. He's going to show us how he's better than Tracy. And that <laughs> golly was, that was a great good completion shot. to Cassie Francis. Beautiful play over there. And Danny Durham finally knocks him down. Nay Young came up out of Savannah as well. He had to throw that ball an awful long way, and they, made, they did a good, ran a good route. He started on a post and came back on the out, deep at about 15 yards. Tracy Ham, by the way, holds the record in NCAA Division I AA championship games in net yards rushing, net yards passing, and touchdown passes completed. And here comes Dwayne Brown good getting job. Good buried job. underneath a sea of white. Robert Underwood, Donnie Allen. Who else getting up out of that pile? I tell you, a great job back there by Chris Aiken. Chris Aiken had, the, had uh, number seven, the receiver, covered. They tried to, to fake the out and go deep, try to hit him for the touchdown, and, and uh, Chris had him covered all the way. Donnie Allen leading the team in quarterback sacks, as you saw just a moment ago, the senior out of Live Oak, Florida, where it's going to be second down and about 14 now. And there's going to be a give right Good up the job. middle and again. Robert Underwood. Robert Our defense Underwood. is playing inspired right now. Robert Underwood had a great tackle on the fullback. As he swamps Richard Kimball, and it's going to bring up third down and about, still about 13. Make it third down and 12. Gain of four. Now, the middle of the field, you see that national championship logo. That's on there in paint. They painted that on this afternoon. But the stripes, if you're wondering why that field looks a little dusty, the stripes and all the numbers out there are all done in chalk. 
as Dwayne Brown goes back to pass again, back. fires it almost. Oh, good job by Chris Aiken. Chris Aiken came up and knocked down Cassie Francis just in time. Beautiful timing by Chris Aiken. Chris Aiken had a great year with interceptions last year. Hasn't intercepted as many passes this year as a senior, but the kid out of Charleston. Everett Sharp did a good job getting underneath that pass, too. That was Everett Sharp out there. I thought it was uh, well, Cassie Chris Francis, but maybe it wasn't. So we forced him to punt again. Ten minutes, ten seconds to go Let in the third run. quarter. Punt's going to hit, and they're going to put Georgia Southern deep in a hole here at about the one-yard line. Well, it's 99-yard drive time. A minute. Make that ten minutes and one second to play. 34-7 to seven is the score. We'll be back after this. We told you about earlier, Bucky, uh, y'all can't beat grits or ham. It's hanging over there over the Arkansas people. There you see the Eagle beating up on the ASU Indian there. But Georgia Southern's got a long way to go here, and the object is not to make a mistake and give them six points. And Tracy Ham brings him to the line of scrimmage, and he's just going to try to sneak it out and gets a little Good running job. room there up to the seven-yard line. Good job. Got him out there where we can let him a little more room to maneuver. A little more maneuver, but a little room. Anthony Withers is the guy who brings him to a stop. 9.46 to play, third quarter. Georgia Southern up 34-7. to And what has been just about all Georgia Southern, with the exception of that 98-yard drive that ASU scored, that closed the gap 10 to 7, and that was as close as it's been since the opening kickoff. Georgia Southern scored initially on a field goal. They've had four of them tonight as Tracy goes oh. and fires out, and Tony Belzer just cannot hang on to the football. Tracy kind of smiling there. Did a good job getting outside the, the contain, and I thought he was going to run it, but uh, Tony was just so wide open that he threw it. And, just tried to be too cautious and then left throwing it behind him. Yeah, yeah. Um, I thought Trey's, I, I, I agree with you, Bucky. I thought he was going to keep it too, and Irk is going to be consulting with his assistant coaches. That's an interesting process that goes through when Paul Johnson, the offensive coordinator, calls a play from up here in the booth, and then they make a decision down there on the field on whether to use it or not. Well, they'll send it down to Jay Russell, and then Jay Russell will send the play, and then in. Uh, you see Gerald Harris trying to run it out and try to get a first down. I don't think they're going to make it. Dan Miller. If it is, this will be our first punt of the night, I do believe. And Pat Parker of Savannah out of Benedictine comes on to try to get Georgia Southern out of trouble. But Pat is going to be, they're going to, they bet you they're going to be coming after him. They'll have a rush on. They've got a 10-man rush. Here they come. There it and goes. The ball is going to go right out of the end zone for two points. Dan Stipe just, uh, Overcompensated for that one. Let's don't fall apart here, sports fans. And with 8.55 to go, we've just given Arkansas State two points and the ball back. Momentum can change. We've seen it happen before. We've got to play good, hard defense and continue to stay after them. And that was uh, the That's first punt of the night. Of course, it could have been worse if that punt had been blocked back there, of course. It could have been six points. That's the first time that I've seen uh, uh, Stan Slipes have a bad snap I think you're right. in his career. I think you're right. Heck of a time to have it, but... Had to um, do it on national TV. Yeah. <laughs> for the national championship. Yeah. Stan being consoled on the sidelines there, but nobody, believe me, folks, nobody feels worse about it than he does. Hang on to your bootstraps, folks. We've got to get after him again. Eight minutes and 55 seconds to go here in the third quarter. Georgia Southern up now 34-9. to nine. We'll punt the ball now. It's a free kick. and So Pat will Pat. get his chance to punt here. Right. Without any pressure. We were talking about the offensive, or the chain of command, of how the offensive plays go in, Bucky. Well, they come down to Jay Russell, and Jay Russell will signal them in, too. Two, uh, boy, got a great punt, a great, great punt. Look at the off. hang time on that. It's taken Just by number down, nine there at the 15-yard line. Good job. And Milton Gore. All down by Milton Gore and Terry Young across the 25-yard line. That was Todd Horton that took that one, and Wesley Lee in there also. Everett Sharp. And then Coach Russell will just will be there and, and consult with them, but basically he's going to let the let the offensive coaches run the the offensive attack. Now he is there. If he wishes to change something, he wishes to give them some 
some uh, that was a uh, first hand knowledge he will do it at that time. That was a 65 yard punt by Pat Parker, by the way. Pat can get off some boomers. Here they come and on the reverse. reverse is going to go over to Whiteside. Whiteside is going to be knocked out of bounds over there. Good job over there by Kenny Butler. Kenny Butler stayed at home, and uh, we didn't get blown off so much as we did the first time they ran that play. And Warnell Anthony finally ran him out of bounds, and they um, gained a uh, loss. Okay. I couldn't figure out where that other marker was. I think he lost about a half a yard. It's going to be second down and 11. Yeah, and once again, throw back again. Back to pass is going to go a little screen pass, and they Get can't the hang on to it. That was intended out there for Dennis Forrest, but he couldn't hang on. It's going to be third down and 11. Big third down play coming up for Arkansas State. Wildman Carter was the guy who put the pressure on. And Wildman is right. Right, right. <laughs> He's an awfully intense individual. Good freshman football player. Be with us for another three years. Coach Lancewell doesn't look very happy over there on the sidelines, and why should he? Time to split the bone again. Now they're going to pass. Down 34 to 9 as okay. they drop back. It's a little delay. Long pass downfield. Intercepted by Georgia Southern. Magnificent interception over there by Milton Gore, the safety. And it's Georgia Southern's football at midfield. 8.31 to play. Georgia Southern up 34 to 9. Look, Milton this, Gore. This is what we were hoping they would be able to do. We get them out of running their option, get them to throw the football. And they just aren't used to coming from this far behind. I just hope that they keep doing what they're doing and we can get some more points on the board. As long as they're not running that fullback, I'm a very happy person. Pass way overthrown, and it was intended, I believe, for Gerald Patterson to split in, but it was way over his head. No, it was intended for Cassie Francis. And it's going to be Tracy looking to pass. Firing way upfield, wide open as Monty Sharp at the 25 to 20. Monty Sharp to the 15 and out of bounds at the 11 yard line. You're seeing Monty Sharp that just can't run. He just, uh, Monty Sharp, under normal conditions, that would have been a touchdown. Yeah. Tracy did a great job reading the defense. We had the, we had uh, uh, Ricky Harris down the middle of the field. He looked at Ricky, looked at Ricky. The corner fell off, and he threw back across the, the field to Monty. And I think Monty was just afraid to stretch it out and really get in a foot race there. He kind of was hoping that that guy would miss him. <laughs> yeah, I can imagine. Greg Lee. Finally did run him out of bounds and listen to the hand from Monty Sharp, the team's all-time leading receiver. Coming over, Ross Warsham congratulating him on the sidelines. Ross is a great receiver, too. Delano Little in there now split wide. Tony Belzer also, Ricky Harris in motion. Tracy fakes the pitch. He goes inside. Tracy cuts inside. Touchdown, Georgia Southern! Unbelievable. If there's a better quarterback in this country, I'd like to see who it is. Um... I don't think you're going to see one. The Georgia Southern fans are going bonkers. It is 40 to 9. I think maybe we can light the cigar. After giving them two points, let's don't light it quite yet. Let's, just, let's get them out here. The fat lady still got to sing, remember? Yeah. But Monty Sharp in to hold. It's a down, and there's the kick. It is automatic. 41 to 9, 8 17 to go in the third period. And we'll be back to the Tacoma Dome right after we pay a few bills. Back at Tacoma, you see Tracy scoring that touchdown. Watch him following his blockers. There you see Rob Witten all set to kick it off. And the crazy kick coverers. Witten good hits kick it high. This time. Good kick. It's coming down, and Earl Easley's oh, going to take George. it at the 10 to the 15. Earl Easley across the 20. And, brother, I'm telling you, he got racked up by David Hodge big time at the 23-yard line. There's the scoring drive, 50 yards in two plays in 14 seconds. I Tracy wouldn't be surprised. Hand. I wouldn't be surprised to see Arkansas State come right back to the wishbone and just try to keep the ball and, and try to run what they do best and just try to you got to almost keep the score down right now. You've got to um, go with uh, the partner that brung you. Yep. Dance with him. Yep. Here, Here comes come. Brown on the option, and he's going to get racked up after about a yard at Great the most. Great defense. Superb. David Hodge was in there again. As was I'm glad they didn't give it to the fullback that time. 
Jamison's out. He's yeah, Jamison has not line. played this half. Jamison has not been into this half. He played that one drive, and that's all. Richard Kimball's back in. Yeah. He'd been injured earlier. Pickup of a yard or so on the play. Let's call it second down and nine. As Brown, who was going to prove to us that he was better Here's than Tracy Ham, dropped straight Throw back, back to again. Pass. And it's going to be complete to Whiteside. Over here. Oh, good move. Whiteside's got some good running room down to the 35-yard line and gets that first yep. down as he crosses the 35. He put He's a big fake on, on Flint Matthews that time and, and uh, got the yardage. Flint had him cornered out there. And when you get him out there, you've just got to force him back to the inside. And Sears split. He's got it made and just missed him. First down to the 37-yard line. As you see it on the replay there, nice moves there by Boris Whiteside. Back to the wishbone. He's checking off this time. Probably going to go to one of their base wishbone plays. Up here he comes. He can pitch it this time. Brown is going oh. to keep it. Going to cut inside. And he may go. Terry, I think that May Young finally wraps him up at the 35-yard line at Georgia Southern after a big pickup on the play. I think our defense was thinking just what I was thinking, that he was going to pitch it. He was going to pitch it, and we just didn't take it. We strung it out, but he stepped inside, and we just didn't. There's a point there where you just got to let him get ahead of you. Donnie Allen checking back in the ball game for Georgia Southern. See, both are. This is Everett Sharp. Get some speed in there. Be first and 10 from the 36-yard line. Georgia Southern, 642, left to play in the third quarter. Brown's going to keep it. He's going to try to go around the right side, fumble. but he gets wrapped up. Sure looked like a fumble that time. We took the ball away from so. him just as he came down and hit the ground. No gain on the play. It's going to be second down and 10. The 36-yard line, 625 to play. Sammy Williams is the guy who knocked him down. Sammy Williams in the ball game coming out now. Sammy gets a big hand from the crowd. Defensive coaches signal to Sammy, come over here. We got something to say to you. Now they spread out to break in the bone. It's going to be a pass. And Brown going to oh. give it up the middle, and they fake the pass. Big hole up there is number 35. That big guy gets in there. Terry Young finally knocks him down. Huge I'm going hole for Richard Kimball. Bill, I think our defense, again, was just thinking what I was thinking. They broke the bone. They were going to pass, and that's the first time we've seen the draw play tonight. Worked beautifully. Here he comes. Robert Underwood is held up there momentarily. You see Brad Bowen can't get to him. And it was finally Young who made the stop from Savannah. Richard Kimball, a freshman from Forest City, Arkansas. Let's see what they're going to do. First and 10 at the 15-yard line. And Brown's going to keep, going to pitch it outside to Whiteside. Whiteside's going to get some big yardage. Touchdown. Boy, we've seen that explosiveness before as they close the gap to 41-15. 5.36 to play in the third period. Just doesn't take them very long, Bill. And hang on to your hats, folks. Brad Bowen has a pitch on that, and he just didn't quite get there. You see Brad coming up, coming up, mm -hmm. coming up, and he just had to jump over that pile, and he didn't make it, and he's the man we have there to get the pitch. And... Didn't work. Boris Whiteside, the senior from Kenneth, Missouri. They're going to go for two points. Try to close it a little field. further. They're not going to illegal and there's a give no inside now he's going to throw it in the end zone and it's no good the pass yeah. was incomplete it was intended for kenneth reed and nay young was there to break it up so the score will remain 41 to 15 with 5 36 to go in the third period and you see brown they had white brown walking off the field they had one of their substitutes was not off the field that time and i thought they were going to get a penalty i think he just didn't make it off the field there yeah. before they ran that play When the fullback went into motion, he was still in motion. I thought that would be two people in motion. <laughs> so you can see that, uh, yeah. Whoever was running off the field in the fullback. So you can see the folks that uh, they can score very, very quickly. That's how they got their score in the first quarter when they closed the gap. We jumped Georgia Southern, jumped out to that 10 nothing lead. And they came 98 yards in seven plays or some such nonsense. Peanuts being distributed by the cheerleaders right now. I want to thank all the people who are working with us tonight. The Lewis Broadcasting Sports Network. 
as it's going to be taken by Ricky Harris there at the 10. Ricky Harris has got some nice yardage across the 25 to about the 30-yard line. They're going to spot it at the 29. Georgia Southern will pull it in play with 5.29 to go in the third period. Thanks to Bobby McAllister, who's been helping us with the audio. Stacy McGee is a guy who makes the tackle. Georgia Southern, first and 10 from the 29. Fred Wagner, our engineer, who's come along with us tonight. Larry Walker, the producer. Thank you, gentlemen. Tracy Ham, 224 passing yardage, 179 yards, 179 or something rushing. Pitch is going to go back to Herman Barron to the 25 to the 30, and outside the 30-yard line, and up. They really wrestled him to the turf and going to be a personal foul against Arkansas State as Herman was really roughed up as he got out of bounds down there. Herman just uh, needed to cut up inside the block. Greg he had the corner Lee. turned out. Greg Lee is going to be pushed around by one of his teammates too. You see Herman here right up inside that block. The 29 had it. Now watch as they go Blue outside. And Lee's going to kind of throw him, almost throw him into one of the assistant coaches or the trainers or something. And boy, there you see the flag. Ball by the defense. Automatic. Automatic first down. Okay, offense. Let's keep it moving. Crystal foul. Arkansas State. First and ten. Georgia Southern leading Georgia this one by a score of 41 to 15. Arkansas State, the number one team in the country, right now doesn't know what hit them. As has been the case, yeah. a lot of times, Herman Barron on the counter, he might get a couple of yards out there. Just couldn't quite get it turned up that time. Looked like he was going to have some yardage on the outside, but great lateral pursuit by Greg Lee from Pine Bluff, Arkansas. That play should break off up right inside the end, right inside the tackle. Herman just couldn't find a hole. It's going to be second down. About eight. As Tracy brings him to the line of scrimmage. This is a team that came in here with the attitude that why should we have to play this game at all? Why didn't you just uh, mail us the trophy? As Tracy rolls outside, he's going to fire across the intended for Ross Warsham or Delano Little. Tracy did a great job of avoiding the blitz that time. Their safety man came inside the end and was home free, and Tracy was able to elude him and get around it. It was, and I thought he should have kept it on that. Um, you could see the blitz coming. You could see by the defensive backs lineup that they were they were going to blitz. See the and they Georgia really didn't, we really didn't block it. Now you see the Georgia Southern cheerleaders. I think it's sideways. Arkansas State right now is trying to pull out all stops defensively to try to try to get our offense stopped. They're getting tired. They have to be. They've been out there for most of the game tonight. Right now they're in a coming Third with down a blitz eight. again. Tracy. Good fall. The Gerald Harris Just that tackle. Oh. Gerald. If he, if he gets by that one, it's a touchdown, and he yep. didn't get out and get the block. Dan had Miller the right a, call played, right play called, had the screen pass on against the blitz, had the fullback free, and didn't get the block on that tackle. 93. Dan Miller made the tackle. That's going to bring up a fourth down. Pat Parker coming in for the second time tonight to punt. And we'll try to get this one off. They are trying Good to come job. after him. A couple of guys hit him, but they don't call any roughing, but they was... Fair catch is called for and made by number nine, Todd Horton, down there. And it's going to be first and ten for Arkansas State at the 21-yard line. That clock just isn't moving fast enough for me, Bill. It is not moving very well at all. And we've got four minutes and 38 seconds to go here in the third period. Georgia Southern up by a score of 41 to 15. We'll return after this. Arkansas State coming to the line of scrimmage here. They're trailing in this ball game, 41 to 15, with 4:38 to play in the third quarter. Dwayne Brown is back to pass. He fires one over the middle, way overthrown. It was intended for Kazzy Francis out there, but it was way over everybody. Kazzy was open early, and uh, he just threw it, threw it late. Kenneth Reed had gone deep, but it wasn't anywhere near him either. And that'll make it second down and 10 from the 21. I'm not going to say watch for the pass because we'll get the draw. <laughs> <laughs> they really mix it up well on that uh, touchdown drive, and they're going to have to do something similar to that this time. As Whiteside goes in motion and Brown goes back to pass, and he's going to be Good wrapped job. up and knocked down by Wesley Lee, I believe, was the guy who was leading the charge on that one to make it third down and about 
15, 16 yards. That's the best pass defense there is right there. No doubt about it. Watch Wesley Lee come blowing in here. Wesley is an extremely intense player, just outstanding physical condition. There you see him coming off the field now, limping a little bit. Hate to see that. He's got good speed, Bucky. Sure it does. There you see the total yards in offense. Georgia Southern, 581 to 187. Third down and 17 for Arkansas State. As Brown goes get to up, pitch. Get up, get up, pitch. Get up. They're going to kick a couple of yards, but <clears throat> no dice there. As he's going to finally be knocked out of bounds. Andre Tate on the play. Sammy Williams, Brad Bowen, Wild Man Carter, all coming up there to oh, make no. the stop. Personal and Georgia Southern, Georgia Southern, Southern we had him stopped. I didn't see what happened over there. It must have been a late hit out of bounds. Well, I don't think that we and, did. And Irk Russell, Irk Russell is pacing down the sidelines. Automatic first down. I just don't understand that. One. Yeah, you're going to watch it here. Is that and what they call? It really. That wasn't. Automatic first down. Now yeah, they're making up some. It really officials, wasn't. The officials are from the Big Sky Conference, and they're uh -huh. all top officials. That's why I'm wearing my Big Sky Conference pin tonight. It's awfully nice of you, Becky. Uh, the Big Sky Conference reference, in case you don't know, that's uh, the conference that uh, we played last week, Reno. And the give is going to go straight They've got ahead. Jemison They've back got in the game again. Jemison back in there, and big yardage for him. Donnie Allen makes the stop, but after about a five-yard game where it's going to be second down. That penalty really hurt us. We had them stopped ready to punt. I didn't think that was really necessary. I never saw the flag go down. Georgia Southern defense dancing around in there, trying to get the ground out back there. Good job, Boy, he, gets, Sharp. he gets knocked down by Everett Sharp. That's a new defense that we put in for the wishbone. And it's really worked tonight. It has worked beautifully. Throwing for about a seven yard loss on the play. It's going to bring up third down and 11 or 12. Let's call it third down and 11. Sharp just came firing in there. Everett Sharp, the freshman out of Lions. That's Monty's brother. Sharp kids are doing all right. Cassie Francis. They run balance for a minute. They better let him get going set. in motion. No, that's illegal. Yeah, but they're not going to call anything. There, there. Yeah, now they're going to call. call something. They fire it out. I don't think we're going to accept it because it's going to nope. bring up fourth down. Tyrone Hall is going to wrap him up over there. That's that old split end in motion play. Pass, <laughs> yeah. Pass to Andre Tate was complete, but they lost two or three yards on it. And the pass is going to be against a legal we'll, procedure. We'll going to be against the planet to make it fourth down. So it's going to be fourth down and about 12. 220 to go in the third period. Georgia Southern up 41 to 15. So Steve Sampson is going to come in to punt it away. Number 87. He's going to be standing at about a 16 yard line, 17. We're playing a very cautious defense. We're playing three deep there, looking for tricks. We don't want them to come out of here with anything. Tony Belzer's deep. It's fourth down and 12. They Good get it away punt. easily. Great punt. Belzer backing up. He's not going to call for a fair catch. It was a low punt. It he may come out of it. He may come out of this. Belzer uh, is going to cut up inside. If you come, can come up inside of that block, he may have done it. But, but he, he did a good job there. catching the ball Todd and a good Horton. job running. Todd Horton knocked him down. <clears throat> So Georgia Southern gets the ball back. It's going to be first and 10. Two minutes and seven seconds to play in the third period. And the ball resting right on the 30-yard line. Tacoma, Washington has been good to Georgia Southern. And the weather has been fantastic. As you watch Belzer trying to get outside there, and Todd Horton saying, not a chance. Georgia Southern cheerleaders, the mascot, all doing a great job, Tracy Ham. Going to give it to Gerald Harris. Gerald's going to get job, about Gerald. four or five in the middle. Would love to get a good sustained drive. Charlie Keep Frederick. Keep the ball. Keeps it as we tick inside. Two minutes in the third period. 41-15. Georgia Southern in the lead. Ball just outside the 35-yard line at the 34. See him in the huddle. 
Gerald Harris, Swainsboro, Georgia, who scored 73 or 74 touchdowns for Georgia Southern in his career. Amazing. The fake to Harris. Tracy's going to keep, and he's going to get wrapped up after about yeah. if he gets any yards on the play whatsoever. Linebacker number 99 scraped off there and did a good job on Tracy that time. Dan Miller. Dan is big. He's in Fort Myers, Florida. He's supposed to bench press about 425 pounds. That's a lot of iron. Dan Miller is six feet, 235 pound junior. He's supposed to be very strong. Ought to have his own zip code. <laughs> 41 Another big third down play. Here comes the blitz. Third down at about six. Coming from the corners. There goes Tracy back to pass. Nobody there. Tracy outside. Tracy to the 40. Tracy's got the first down at the 45. Tracy to the 47-yard line. And finally, Char Dan Miller and Charlie Frederick are going to bring him down 43 yards on the play. That's just amazing. We had the blitz right in his face. Came and a good, did a good stop job pulling him up. And somehow he scored it out of there. Let me take that back. 14 seconds to play. Dan Miller is down and living a little bit. Look here, the two bit. guys chasing him. Anybody that's a step slower than that would have never made it. Every time you think he's down, something happens. And Dan Miller. Dan Miller just going out of the ball game. Limping off the field. Limping. I hope he's going to be okay. What a great competitor. It certainly is. 43 seconds to go in the third period. 41 to 15. There you see Dan Miller, Fort Myers, Florida. Boy, Florida has some great athletes. Don't they? We've gotten a lot of good ones from Georgia Southern down there, Bucky. We sure have. We've got a lot of good Georgia boys there, too. That's the truth. Tracy Ham, the quarterback draw. Tracy's going to get to He up. almost had some yardage there as Charlie Frederick is going to trip him up as he crosses midfield to about the 47-yard line of Arkansas State. 15 seconds, 14-13 in the third period. As this one's ticking into history, 41 to 15 the score. Tracy Ham's rushed 23 times for 190 yards. Let the quarter tonight. run out now. And that's going to be the end of the third quarter. And we're coming up with quarter number four. Georgia Southern in the lead for the national championship for the second time in a row. Who have very little to cheer about other than saying, we're on television. 41 to 15 is the score. We've got 15 minutes to play. Georgia Southern 15 minutes away from their second national championship. Hold on to your hats, folks. We've seen how explosive Arkansas State can be if they get things to go their way. It's important that we can take this ball down and get some more points on the board. Extremely important. This ain't running up the score, folks. This is just insurance. Never feel sorry for your opponent. Ooh. Pass that was intended for somebody. They're coming every down now with a blitz. Herman Barron was out there, but... Tracy's pass was right in between Herman and another offensive receiver. No chance of it being intercepted, of course, but it's going to bring up third down and about six yards. Tracy's upset with himself there. Oh, I don't blame You'll him. see him coming with a blitz again right now. Look for the... Tracy's great at avoiding him, though. 41-15 the score. We are just underway in the fourth period. Now it's they're going to play down. coverage this time. They're not going to come blitzing. Tracy, plenty of time until he gets racked up by number 46, Marvin Nelson. What happened there? Nelmans. Something broke down, and there's a flag on the play. It may have called roughing the. Might have been roughing the passer. Well, could we be that lucky? Face mask. Face mask. Well, well, well. Let's see. That yep. may give us another Ooh. shot at third down. Yeah. Was it ever? That was Marvin Nelmans. That should be an automatic first down. No. Oh, you got. Let's see what they've got here. Now there's another discussion. How much more can they discuss here? Pass, five yard penalty by the defense. Repeat third down. So we get third down, although they lines keeper over there or whatever put fourth down now he's flipping it back to third there you see the arkansas state indian who doesn't look happy with the situation but we lost yardage on the play now, bucky that doesn't seem right to me 
That well, it was like a, the sack was deep in our backfield. That looked like an intentional point. face mask. I'm sorry, maybe I'm just, I, I'll admit I'm prejudiced, but it looked like he grabbed that thing on purpose. Tracy back to pass. He's gonna, he's not gonna get away from that one either. He's dropped in the backfield. Aaron did a good job of, of breaking inside the block that time. Tracy's been coming outside in Marvin to give and get pressure. Skin. And Pat Parker will be coming into punt, bringing up fourth down and about uh, 13. So Parker will be punting from his own 30-yard line as we're ticking down toward 14 minutes, and they bring everybody after him. But Pat gets a pretty good punt off, and again, they get a good roll. They're just going to let it roll, too. And Chris Aiken's yeah. going to stop it at about the 12-yard line. Okay, defense, one more time. Yes, indeed. 14-03 to play in this ball game. Georgia Southern up 41-15. to We'll be back in a minute. Tacoma, Washington. Bill Edwards here along with Bucky Wagner. You see the coach for Arkansas State pacing the sidelines. That is Lance, Larry Lancewell, that is. Lacewell, Larry Lacewell. Lacewell. So it is. Now they've come unbalanced for the first time tonight. We expected a little bit more of this. And Dwayne Brown calling the signals. Dwayne Brown's going to keep it. Dwayne Brown's going to pitch to Whiteside. Whiteside to the 25 to the 30. Whiteside finally run out of bounds by Terry Young, but not before he picked up some nice yardage around that right end. They go unbalanced and load that option and, and have an extra man over there to drive our corner up. We just had no support over there whatsoever. Here it is on the replay. We've got so many people down Beautiful the field pitch. blocking our, see our corner isn't back there yet. There he finally gets into the play 30 yards down the field. Boris Whiteside, the senior from Kenneth, Missouri. As Brown brings him back up, they're back in the standard wishbone, and the give is going to go once again, and some big back. yardage in there to the fullback. Richard Kimball, Flint Matthews brings him down, but he picks up about five or six yards on the play. Give him seven, second and three. 13.40 to play. It just, Clock ticking. Uh, happens too fast. We've got to slow them down. We've got to make some big plays. Two big chunks of yardage. That is the only way they have scored tonight, is they've had two long scoring drives and they have just eaten up yardage. They're going back to the wishbone and just trying to run the football. And Brown back to pass. Long pass down there. If he can run under it, he does indeed. Beautiful pass down. Terry Young finally brings him down. That was Anthony Andre Tate that caught it. And there is a flag or something. Yes, there is. No Inadvertent flag. flag. They not just. Uh... So it's going to be a first down at the Georgia Southern 28-yard line. Got to come up with some big Brown. plays right now. It was a nice touch on the ball. Just laid it out there. The Tate made Corner a beautiful got sucked in. Tate made a beautiful reception on it. 41 to 15, the score. Clock started again. We are down to 13 minutes. Now, Dwayne Brown, 6 for 13 tonight, 75 yards. Here's the unbalanced again. Watch the option going up to the top. And the give is going to go straight ahead, and, and he gets away. That's Richard Kimball again. Had him stopped, had the tackle, and he just kept driving and broke free. Richard Kimball. Chris Aiken finally brings him down at the 15-yard line of Georgia Southern where it's going to be another first down. Watch him. We've got him stopped right here. We've got that our second, a lot of our second teamers in there right now. But great, great second effort by Richard Kimball. Here they go, the unbalanced again up to the top. Watch the option go up to the top. And here comes. Brown. Oh, good to job. Back inside. Good job, defense. good job. Defense knocks him down. Robert Underwood got a good job getting out there underneath the, the pitch. And did a good job playing the quarterback. The junior from Statesboro comes up with the big play again. Everett Sharp also in there on it. The clock ticking down toward 12 minutes now. Ball at the 16-yard line. A loss on the play. It's going to be second down and about 11. 12 minutes right now. 
Georgia Southern up 41 to 15 and Brown back, back to pass him. straight across the middle okay. and he can't hang on that was intended out there for number 17 Fred Barnett Barnett couldn't get it at the five again they were coming out this way with the option type move throwing third. back to the tight end on the curl third down at 11 Chris Aiken on the defense this will be an interesting call sure they're going to try to get it in two downs now I'm sure that they're probably going to um, yeah they probably go on fourth down even if they don't get it here as Whiteside goes in motion to the right Brown goes back to pass he fires it over almost intercepted by Brad Bowen Good Bowen had his hands on it and Bowen thought he should have had it. and he probably should have intended out there for Andre Tate number 36 but the guy in white wearing 36 stepped right in front of him and nearly had this football beautiful play by Brad Bowen playing his final game for Georgia Southern the senior out of Plantation Florida thank you Brad he's made some beautiful plays for Georgia Southern in his years here here comes the blitz. Here come the blitz, and here goes right. Brown, and Brown goes down, and Larry Boone is the Good guy. Good job, Larry Boone. Holds him down, 11.41 to go, and it's Georgia Southern's football at the 26-yard line. That was just man-on-man. Man. Boone in the guard, and Boone just whipped him and came in and made a big, big, big play. You can see the concern of the Arkansas State cheerleader, pretty young lady with a sad face. Now if we can put together a good drive, we can sit back. 11.41 to play. Georgia Southern's up by a score of 41 to 15. You see Larry Lacewell on the sidelines there. Tracy Ham going to give it to Gerald Harris. And that's going to be the end oh, of the line. Boy, did they read that, that one. That middle perfect. guard did a great job. At times, he'll take the side away from the strong safety. And that time, he took the side and in. We didn't handle him and ran right into Gerald Harris. We just did not block Gerald him that time. Ron Hillers was a guy who came in there and plugged up that hole in a hurry. He just read that right. Going to be second down and 11. If it wasn't a read, he just takes that side. and We didn't get a chance. He got penetration. Didn't get a chance to cut him behind him. 11 minutes to play. Almost. 11.09. Tracy Ham brings him up where it's going to be second down and 11 from the 25-yard line. Somebody jumped. Somebody moved. I don't think they had to throw those flags I think they all know we're going we were going to pass <laughs> by the way Ricky took off seemed obvious five yards Outside. against Georgia Southern that'll make it third down and 16 second down and 16 11 02 to play that stopped the clock Ricky went took off when our man went in motion just a little lack of concentration yeah you know that's that can happen when you've got a big lead like this but you it can't. sure can you still can't. got to play hard Ricky Harris right over the middle Ricky Harris at the 50 Ricky can do Ricky at the 35 Ricky at the 20 Ricky at the 15 and 10 five. touchdown Georgia Southern what a beautiful <laughs> pull on that play it looked like Tracy a little pass. Pass. just a little too far but Ricky ran under it and nobody was there, 47 to 15. <laughs> Just a little pop fest. What a great group of players. Ricky split the defense on that one. Watch it again. Beautiful blocking on the line. Tracy had to throw that one in a hurry. Watch Ricky just run right under it. Right and past the safety. Now it's nothing but a foot race. Is off to the races and Tim Foley will come in to kick this one. I think they Perfect. were offsides, but I think we'll be all right. And it makes it 48 to 15 temporarily, but they were offsides, I believe, as Bucky said. We'll check it very quickly. Gary Miller's running to the sidelines. Tim Foley keeps walking off. Like offsides, defense. White kick. So what do we do here? Go for two? Well, no, we... our linemen are just in there having their little huddle. We oh. couldn't find a captain. <laughs> you oh. look white captain, there wasn't anybody around. <laughs> it's offside. The points are good. The point is good. You missed her on the kickoff. So the penalty will be assessed on the kickoff. 10.52 to play. Georgia Southern up 48 to 15. 
One of the trainers came up to me before the ball game, Bucky, and said that he thought that this game would be easier than last week. And I said, well, I hope you're right. He didn't see the films. I know. <laughs> They're an awfully good football team, but you just have to realize, Georgia Southern fans, what we're seeing here. And the great, great athletes that we have playing, and Tracy Ham and Gerald Harris and Ricky Harris. This is just a historical moment. Last time we'll get to see them play in the blue and white for Georgia Southern. And a historical moment in the fact that Georgia Southern is 10 minutes and 52 seconds away from their second national championship. That may have just taken the wind out of Arkansas State sails. I think they've packed the boat up. You can see the um, dejected players on the sidelines there, the folks who were so arrogant and so cocky, saying things in the newspaper like, why don't they go ahead and give us the trophy now? Why do we have to go ahead and play this ball game? It's going to be taken there on about the five-yard line. Big hole through the middle. Gets up to about the 27. They were uh, rather confident in the newspaper. And, uh, saying some things that just uh, really you'd rather your team wouldn't uh, wouldn't say. I think Irk would have had our guys out drawn and quartered for saying some of those things, uh, Bucky. Well, I think that Coach Russell set that tone and and uh, it's the way you, you prepare the players and you let them know that it's an 11-man game, that everyone's got to play hard and play together, and there's no any one person. We've probably come as close to with Tracy Ham as anyone, but it just, uh, you've got to get your own personal pride out of the, out of the game and think team. Think minutes, team, little me. 10 minutes and 40 seconds. This is the most points, 48 points, the most points in a championship game. Get up. As you see a new quarterback coming in there and getting racked up. Well, that man, reverse. Carter rocks him a little bit. That's Fred Barnett. And a quarterback, unless I'm... Fred Barnett had taken a handoff, was it? Dwayne Brown still in there? Okay. James Wildman Carter, a freshman. Here's the unbalanced line again. Watch him to come out the option. Coming toward us this time. We go Brown gives it off straight up the middle and that's just going to do anything but um, not going to do anything but eat up the clock as we're ticking down Bigger toward 10 minutes right now yeah. Sammy Williams and Wesley Lee on the tackle It'd be nice if we could get a big play here and force them to punt third down and about five 9.45 to go. Georgia Southern up 48 to 15, the most points that's ever been scored in a championship game by the winning team. Comes a draw play again. And it's going to work to perfection. Yep. Baker Kimball. Kimball's yep. got about 10, 15 yards out there. That was a good call. Third, third and five, third and six. It's a good call for a draw. Brad Bowen racks him up. There you go. Watch it from the end zone. Beautiful draw. Big hole up the middle there. And Kimball just makes things happen as he weaves his way through traffic. Good tackle, good upfield tackle Going by Brad Bowen. 40-yard 40, 40 line, first and 10. Unbalanced line again. Looked like somebody jumped, but no flag. A long pass, way downfield. Almost picked off Trey. Terry Young had the best chance of getting that. It was intended for Whiteside, Boris Whiteside. Slightly overthrown, and Terry Young was doing his level best as fast as his little legs could carry him to get to that football, but to no avail, 9.16 yeah. to go. We jumped into a running down defense late and uh, we're kind of confused a little bit on the snap, but we were able to get back and Brad Bowen did a good job getting back there and, and covering that pass. Georgia Southern tonight, Bucky, in 48 rushes is rushed for 308 yards compared to 165. He's a little Arkansas screen. State. Somebody got to be holding. They tried a little screen pass that time out the left, and Wesley Lee got out there and played it very well. Quarterback had a hold level. Looks like a holding penalty on Arkansas State. That's exactly what it is. And I believe the guilty party was Richard Kimball, the fullback. You take the penalty here? Wesley Lee just refused it, so I'm okay. going to say we're not going to take the penalty. Good, good thinking. So that'll be third down and 10. Third down and 15. They lost about five yards on the play. Third and 16. There you see.
you see all the Georgia Southern players. Man, hi guys, hey everybody back home. There you see the agony of defeat. As Brown drops back to pass, Sammy Williams uh -oh, trying to get him. Brown run. has got room to run as he finally gets away from that rush. He's going to run it around there. He gets a lot of yardage. But he still, still has about, about fourth and five. Fourth down and five yards to go is Everett Sharp. They've got to go for it here, Bucky. I don't think there's any doubt about that. Fourth and four. There's no doubt about it. Watch him just scramble out of this situation here. Brought Brown. in number 80, another tight end. They're going to go unbalanced again down coming toward us this time. They're probably going to come out with the option that's this way. We got a blitz on. Oh, Brown. good job. Trying to get it in there. Good defense. I don't think he made it. Brown is going to be short as Danny Durham racks Danny him Durham up. Danny Durham was on the blitz that time, got in there, took away the took away the pitch right away, made the force the quarterback to catch it. We caught it from up inside. Good defense, Eagles. I love it. Eight minutes and 18 seconds to play. Folks, if we sound a little prejudiced, it's only because we are. And Ken Burnett comes in for Tracy Ham. Tracy is going to get a well-deserved breather here. I'm sure you'll probably see him back in since it is his last game as a Georgia Southern Eagle. Eight minutes, 18 seconds to go. Ken Burnett, he's checking off of the line of scrimmage. He's going to give it up the middle to Gary Miller. I think we were moving that time. He checked off and we just got a little bit of jitters. Got a lot of new people in there. Got some new offensive linemen in there. And you've got a lot of brand new people in there. Yeah. Just a little hesitation on the snap count there. You've got to get the cadence proper. They may refuse the penalty. Just try, try to get it back. Probably will. No, they're going to they're gonna take it. It's going to be first Number and 50. two out there who agreed with me, he refused the penalty. Don't think he's a defensive captain, though, huh? <laughs> no. Procedure against Southern. There you see it. Eight minutes and 13 seconds to go. Ken Burnett. Tracy Ham's backup this season. Incredible job. Give it to Gary Miller. Miller gets about two yards before he's racked up by Ron Hillers. It'll be second down and probably uh, 13 or so. Give him two yards on the play. Three yards. Inside eight minutes now. We're down to 750. Big lead for Georgia Southern. A phenomenal success story. I'm not sure you folks appreciate it. I know there are a lot of Southern boosters out there that have given an awful lot of their time and their money. They really have. To help us get this program going. Thank you, Southern yeah. Boosters. Thank you, people of Statesboro and everybody in Southeast Georgia who's come forth to, to build this program. Had a call from Dale Lick this morning, wishing us well. He had uh, had made arrangements to come to the game, but he thought it was on Saturday night. Oh, we always goodness. did have to kind of get, keep him straight and get him at the right place at the right time. Isn't that the truth? <laughs> what, does he think he's the president of Maine or something? <laughs> yeah. Come where he wants to. Ken Burnett rambling around out there, and he's going to get dumped for a big loss. It's going to be fourth down and about 17 as he gets racked up around the 39-yard line. We still need to put more people in that stands at Paulson Stadium, folks. Come on out and see the Eagles next season. There you see Tracy Ham. His final game as an Eagle. He is a winner. He'll go out a winner. Six minutes and 34 seconds to play as Pat Parker yeah, they standing come. They're trying to block at his 29-yard line. Ten-man rush. We're going to let that clock run just as long as it will. Might even take a penalty, Bucky. 22, and here comes the penalty. Delay a game. Six minutes and 20 seconds to play. That'll back Pat up another five yards, so he'll punt it from about the 23 now. Well, I certainly hope we get a good chance to look at the rush coming. So Pat Parker will punt it this time. Todd Horton down at the other end. 
They're coming after Ooh. him. Get the play away as a million flags and go up in the air. And um, bad Lewis. count, my word. Stop that thing. And heavens, Terry Young. It looked, uh, it looked like our center moved the ball and their defense jumped. And I guess it is Southern called against off. their defense. Southern was offsides, I believe. No, it was down offsides on Arkansas on State. Arkansas State. When Stan Sipe raised the ball, they end up at the top of the picture, jumped off across the neutral zone. I'm sure we'll get a chance to punt that one again. Or I'm sure that we want to punt that one Yes, again. we do. I'm sure that Parker now... We've got to watch Ken Butler. He almost backed up into the punter that Defense. time. He's got to step Offside. forward. Repeat fourth down. And make his block. Maybe this will get Georgia Southern some respect. Last week, we knock off the number one team undefeated in Reno. This week, we knock off the number one team in Arkansas State. Pat Parker Good. gets it away. Gets knocked down, but his own blocker was sort of blocked into him. Yeah, Ken Butler just backed up into it. There's, there's 100 flags go down at the other end on the play. I didn't see what happened down there, Bill. I've we must have bumped the. Didn't uh, either. Bumped the receiver bumped after the he. Bumped the receiver after he caught him. After um. After he called for a fair catch. That was Todd Horton. Todd Horton. Kind of a half-hearted. Play and somebody. I see all our coaches came out of the press box and are down on the field now, just enjoying these moments. What's he called? Looks like he's called a touchdown. I don't know oh, what the heck he's doing down there, but anyway, the score is 48 to 15. And with 5.58 to play, we'll be back in a minute. Dwayne Brown's running it. He's going to fire it over to Kazi, um, what's his face there? Kazi Francis, who pitches it right back to Andre Tate. Little flea Dwayne flicker Brown. that time. And Just trying to get any big play that they can get. Yeah. Roll it. All our Southern fans that were here last year and remember the Bethel band that came in and, and yeah. supported us. Well, President Harry Carter has just given them all Georgia Southern T-shirts. They're all wearing their Georgia Southern shirts, waving their Georgia Southern uh, pom-poms and, and playing for the Eagles. And the give is going to go straight up the middle. That's going to be big number 35. Is that Kimball? Who is that? What a great effort. Yes, that's Richard Kimball. Kimball. Like the one-armed man's after him again. He hasn't quit. Gets it up to the 39-yard line before Edward Eves. Going to bring him down. 545 to play. 48 to 15, Georgia Southern. Want to thank everybody back at the studio for, for helping out. Fred Pierce, our general manager, executive vice president, who's made all this possible for Georgia Southern. Georgia Southern graduate himself, something that we do for our community. Supporting the Eagles. Pitch yeah, back. We were looking for this. Go to pass. But we've got it covered back Cassie there. Francis. Get him smoke. Run. Oh, Cassie's no. going to get some big yards. Cassie to the 30. Cassie to the 25. To the 15. He could score. He was almost knocked out of bounds, but he goes into oh, score. Brad that's Bowen. just hard to believe. We, we had that out. defense so well. A busted play that worked to perfection. Closing the gap to 48 to 21 with 5.15 to go. And somehow you just can't that's, believe. It's that's just a shame because our defense had played so well to let some play like that break out and, and score. I know we had a defense. We had the the, uh, the receiver covered. We had the reverse covered. And he just came back around and and just, there you I see. guess that's what they say about Tracy when he does all those things. That's right. They say that you shouldn't have happened. You just can't believe it. Going for two. Why not? Brown back to pass. Can't find anybody yet. Rolling around. Yeah, Boone has got it. Okay. He throws it way out of bounds back there. Larry Boone had him all wrapped up. And so with five minutes and 15 seconds left to play in this one, it's 48 to 21 in favor of Georgia Southern. We'll be back in a minute. Well, gee, we're back here in Tacoma, and um, yeah, I wonder what they're going to do now. <laughs> Very definitely onside kick. They've got everyone lined up over inside the hash mark. He's going to kick the ball on the ground, make it bounce about three times, uh -huh. and then it's going to be a mad scramble. Yep. 48 to 21 the score. 5.15 to play. 
folks, we're not out of the woods yet. Why does everything have to be like this is what I want to know. There's the kick. It's going to go uh -oh, right uh -oh, straight to Tony uh -oh. Belzer. Belzer to the 35, to the 30. Belzer nearly broke that one. He's finally hauled down by number 41, Frank Richards, the kicker. I've seen that happen, Bill, on different occasions where onside kicks like that, you just break by the people and you can go all the way. Navy was playing Penn State one year. Ted Kowalik was a tight end. They're ahead six to nothing. And instead of, they're, they're just less than a minute to go in the game and they didn't want a chance to kick off. They tried an onside kick. Ted Kowalik got the ball, ran by the defenders and went all the way into touchdown. Penn State won seven to six. Just amazing. Ken Burnett still back in at quarterback. The ball at the 31 yard line. Burnett's gonna give it off to Gary Miller. Gary Miller's got no place to go. Big He's middle guard up. just did a good job stopping that. That's the nose guard that they said would uh, we couldn't block. Yep. We couldn't move on their defense, they said. Charlie Frederick. We didn't block him very well that time. Yeah. But the rest of the night, we haven't exactly double teamed the guy. No, we haven't. We haven't changed our blocking assignments at all. We have not double teamed him. We've tried to handle him one-on-one. -on -one, and through most of the evening, we've been successful. It's going to be second Great down. Great credit to 12. our center, Dennis Franklin. Amen to that. 48 to 21 the score. Four minutes, 34 seconds to play. Burnett calling him out. Somebody jumped off sides, I believe. Yes, I think we were moving. Yep. So it'll probably be up second down and 16. They had a little pop pass on that time. And looked like our line was moving. So Southern will get another crack at it. We beat second down. Four minutes, 27 seconds to go. Georgia Southern got this one. The fat lady's not singing, but uh, by golly, there's that national championship ring they won here last year. That beautiful thing. Ken Burnett's going to try the quarterback draw. He don't do bad. Yeah, we're moving Burnett's. again, though. We had motion again. They're not going to give it. <laughs> Sure was a late flag. I think he thought it was in the other pocket. He must have. Keith Harnes on the tackle. Keith Harnes is the guy that made the stop. But it's going to be procedure against Georgia yeah. Southern. Just got a lot of young kids in there right now. They're Bunch excited of, to have a chance to play. Oh, sure. Bunch of guys out there getting their big chance. 4.15 to go. Now it's going to be second and 21. As the Marines say, we are advancing to the rear. <laughs> All the beautiful signs that people have made over there is one that says white lightning douses fire water. Georgia Southern's decided to change their name from Blue Thunder to White Lightning. Here comes the blitz. Here comes the blitz. And Burnett brings them up. Burnett gives it off. Gary Miller, I believe. Miller gets about five or six yards. Well, if he could have just popped that one, he could have gone all the way. They had the they had everyone coming and he just almost did it. Miller's an explosive runner as Keith Keller gets him. So we get that five yards back that we lost on the last penalty or procedure play. You see Ken Burnett there. I think I'm going to start getting happy, Bill. Keith Jeter <laughs> coming on the sidelines. Are you telling me happy hour is about to start? <laughs> Three minutes and 30 seconds. No, I think we might be doing good. Clock's ticking away as Ken Burnett rolls back to pass. He's going to throw this one all the way down to nobody. Way out of bounds. Threw it to Darren Chandler. <laughs> Chandler That'll jumps over a up. And Pat Parker in the ball game to punt. Really be nice if you could put uh, Tim Foley in there to kick a long field goal, but that just wouldn't be uh, what you might call as kosher oh, I don't know. head as far as we are right now just put him in a hole you got another big rush on big good rush. punt good punt look out and again I thought that was going to carry a little farther grounding it <clears throat> Todd Horton with three minutes and 11 seconds to play Georgia Southern on their way to a second national championship in a row 48 21 the score will return in a moment and 11 seconds to play 48 to 21 Georgia Southern it's 13 minutes after 2 o'clock back east we appreciate the folks 
staying up with us. The give is going to go straight ahead to Richard Kimball. Kimball's got big yards across the middle to the 30-yard line. May Young finally stops him. That clock just continues to run. There's unless somebody's called a timeout. Nope, they're going to start it again after they set the chains. And it's running, getting down, taking down to three minutes now. 302, 301, three minutes. Got a lot of young people in there on the defense right now. That's very Sammy Williams in one of the guards, and he usually plays outside the tackle. Very few. Charlie Waller. Veterans in there now. There's some folks in there, as they could say, they played in a national championship game. Rolling to his left. Number 11 for Arkansas State. New guy in there, Mark Robbins. Mark Robbins, the new quarterback. Well, Taz Dixon <laughs> kissed him down in the sideline. Those two had quite a collision. <laughs> that was a... Horrendous hit over there. Mm -hmm. Taz Dixon, a freshman out of Dublin. Clock is ticking. Two minutes and 15 seconds now. Georgia Southern up by a 48 to 21 score. The give is going to go straight it. ahead. Nice big hole by Richard Kimball. We've got to get up and get that guy stopped. Kimball up to the 50 yard line. Two minutes, five seconds now before they set the chains back down. There'll be less than two minutes before they get this play off. 48-21, Georgia Southern. About to become the first team in the nine-year history of this playoff to repeat as national champions. An historic moment that you're watching. We appreciate you staying up with us back east. And the give is going to go straight ahead to Kimball. Kimball breaks it again to the 35, down to the 31-yard line for Jeff Evans and Flint Matthews can stop him. Jeff Banks. I got Larry Boone back in the ball game there. Larry Boone coming back in. Get in there for Sammy. Sammy Williams, a great player for us, but he just like got moved. Out of water at that they position. moved into that guard position because uh, uh, Charles Walker or Craig Walker got hurt. Craig Walker came out of their game in Reno. You remember seeing him get right. carried off on the field last week against Reno, carried off of the field. Number 11, Mark Robbins, going to be rolling around to his right. Going to pitch, pitch on the outside, going outside, inside the 25 to the 24-yard line before Milton Gore. Our defense has played so well tonight. Just uh, that score in the broken play. And I just hope that we can keep them from scoring right now because I just like to keep that score down just because they've played so well. James McCarley, the running and back. We're playing a lot of second-team people right now. Here's Chris Aiken, Tim Foley, Robert Underwood, Brad Bowen. Who else in there? Keith Jeter? No, Jeter's an offensive Jeter's half. Offensive. Back, so. Okay. <laughs> we're getting some of the players. Here's Brad Bowen going back into the ball game. Just to try to keep them out. They've called the timeout. One minute and 15 seconds to play. What a great season. What a great two years, three years. Just uh, and unbelievable, fact, Bill. And the fact that nine of these games have been on the road this year, Buck. <coughs> I don't know who scheduled this. Let's get after him. <clears throat> the team will will be back in the in the savannah airport coming to butler aviation somewhere around uh, nine o'clock in the morning we'll leave immediately after the the game go to the airport uh, we already packed our clothes and get on the bus and get back to statesboro i know that, that all our fans back there want to see these folks for the last time at big gulf air charter boy i tell you we had a great time coming out here we flew um commercial we flew on eastern mm -hmm. and um i want to thank george monroe at eastern for really just doing a superb job for us and last couple of weeks getting us out to Reno and then back over here to Seattle. There's a and Cassie. Cassie had that one for just, Cassie Francis had that one for a second and Taz Dixon just clobbered. So it falls incomplete. A minute 10 seconds. Watch it again. Robbins fires it in there. He's got it. Taz just comes over there and knocks it right out. Taz's mom here for the ball game. I know she's really proud of that young man. But um, flight out here on Eastern, they kept on congratulating Georgia Southern and wishing us well on the flight because the co-pilot was from um, is, uh, is it uh, Darren Duke, I believe, from Statesboro. 
sure Darren Duke from Statesboro lives right in Greenbrier. Mm -hmm. hey, um, Jeff Banks in there to make the stop. Had a blitz on him that time. Probably come back with the same thing this time. Robbins lost a little bit of yardage on the play. It's fourth down and about uh, four yards to go. A minute four to play, 48 to 21 the score. Georgia Southern, Larry Lacewell, just there's nothing he can do now. There you see the time. Here we come from the corners. The wishbone with the blitz. There goes Total Robbins. Get up there underneath There goes the it. pitch. And a, oh, and a job beautiful defense. job on the defense. Good and job by Brad Bone. The first down as Danny Durham comes up and stops him short. 58 seconds and all Georgia Southern has to do now is fall on it. They said it couldn't be done. Less than a minute to go now. Ken Burnett comes out. Just quite a great honor and a great privilege for Eric Russell and his assistant coaches and all our great, great seniors. We're going to miss these fellas, but they have given us so much great, great football. The national champions, the best team in the Division I AA, two years in a row. And we Curry have really Kirk been Patrick. blessed. There you see Tracy. Look at those statistics tonight. Curry Kirkpatrick, if you listen over there at Hilton Head, why don't you put us on the cover of Sports Illustrated? Pal, see if you can use your influence. This team deserves it. 49 seconds in the clock running, 47, 46. There you see the Georgia Southern you. players getting ready to lift Coach Eric Russell up on their shoulders. Tracy Ham, you should get a shot of that. Tracy Ham and Eric Russell. Monty Sharp getting a big hug from Coach. <laughs> coach is jumping of, up and down. <laughs> Eric, not one who shows what a whole a lot great, of emotion. Great dab. They're dumping, <laughs> dumping, they water, just dumping water all over. They just dumped <laughs> all the water on Coach Russell. <laughs> They're all rubbing his bald head right now. Yeah. What a great <laughs> time for Georgia Southern, Southern Boosters, all the faculty and all the students at Georgia Southern you College. Enjoy this stand one. up and be proud. Five Four, seconds. Four, three. three. Two, it's all one. over, folks. This one's We're history. National champions. The second national championship in a row. Here, doggy, doggy, doggy. <laughs> Coach Jerk Russell getting carried off. There you see the Georgia Southern sweatshirt. Thanks to the Bethel High School band. Maybe we'll be out here next year, too. Who knows? Get Ernest Thompson cranked up. 48 to 21, the final. The largest score in the history. Maybe Georgia Southern can earn some respect now. For two weeks in a row, we've knocked off the number one team in the country. We've defended our national championship. It was certainly an easier night than we thought it was going to be. It's just a great, great offensive show by Tracy Ham and our seniors on offense. And our defense really played well. Just superb. Just we superb. have been able to play against the run pretty well all year long. It's the people that throw the ball 50 times a game and people that run up the score on us. But they get the ball back to our offense, and our offense scores too. And we're just so happy that the defense could have such a great day as they had today. 48-21 the final. And there goes Larry Lacewell and Coach Eric Russell. Trophies will be presented in the The time. Uh huh. There going. we are. All right, now I'm on. Hey. Uh, just, uh, I know Rick Mann is back at, at Georgia Southern. We'll be uh, letting folks know what time the plane will be in. We'll be coming into Butler Aviation. You could probably call Butler Aviation. Uh, we hope there are no delays. We hope to get back around 9 o'clock tomorrow morning. Okay, 9 o'clock tomorrow morning, Butler Aviation at the Savannah International Airport. And there you see the national championship t shirts, uh, sweatshirts that you can get. And take a look at that. And there's the Eagle that um, with the big crown on his head walking across the country and the two years 1985 86 they've already got these things made up and they're going to be selling them and they'll be ready and available and Georgia Southern has won it just one more time the second national championship and historic night 48 to 21 the most points that's ever been scored in a championship game and also uh, Tim Foley four for four on field goals tonight. I don't think he came in the second half no. did he? it's just a great tribute to our seniors to Tracy Hammond just so happy for them 
that he could have the great night that, that they should have and have it on national television. He's just a great, great player. He's been a great person for us. He, he's done everything we've asked him to do and done it in great style. And just a tribute to Coach Russell, his leadership, to all our Southern boosters, all the faculty and students back at Georgia Southern that have been so supportive of us. Dale Lick up there in the snow drift up in Maine. God bless all of them. Yeah, Dale Lick was a guy who had the vision and the, um, the guts to, to go through with this program and, and bring the people in that was necessary, go after Bucky Wagner, go after Irk Russell, when everybody said that he was nuts to try to go get Irk Russell after Georgia had won that national championship. Well, they, they said that about a lot of things that he did, but I'll guarantee he would compete. <laughs> and you better get up early in the morning if you're going to outwork him. But it's just great. It's unbelievable. I just, uh, you know, it's just hard to to explain and have an adjective to explain just how good you feel. We want to thank everybody for joining us along the Lewis Sports Network tonight as well. We also appreciate all the technical staff and we appreciate you folks staying up with us and joining us. Georgia Southern has won this thing out here in the Tacoma Dome two years in a row. 48 to 21 the final tonight. Tracy Ham, Ricky Harris, uh, Gerald Harris all in their final games for Georgia Southern just playing their hearts out playing against a team that just knew that they were going to win this ball game without any trouble whatsoever. Well, they just, uh, <laughs> you just can't do the things that they tried to do before the ball game. Shows you how wrong it can be. That's right. You just never know that what's going to happen. That national when you championship trophy has just been handed out down there on the field, and, and the players are, are coming off on the sidelines, and they, uh, the final, they haven't come out quite with the final statistics yet, but nevertheless, we had well over 550 yards at the end of the third quarter. Now, I know that the last part of the, of the fourth quarter when we put in the, the reserves, we didn't get many yardage, but we'll probably be well over 600 yards again, and, and uh, that's just unbelievable. Again, this is a great Arkansas State team. It really team is. Team that tied Old Miss, beat Memphis State. Both these teams, neither of these teams had lost to a 1-double-A team. And uh, just, uh, it's just a great, great tribute to to everybody and just I hope everybody just enjoys the all the pleasure and all the honor that they deserve folks come out and see the Eagles they aren't a fluke they have done something that no other team has done you have watched history tonight uh, I hope you came out and watched Tracy Ham at some point in the four years that he played for Georgia Southern in person because you really saw something special you saw something special here tonight as well we appreciate your being with us and for everybody here, for everybody back there at the, uh, the Lewis Broadcasting um, Network, we appreciate you joining us tonight. We thank you, um, thank everybody, all of our sponsors who were, who were so kind to, to donate the money that was necessary to make these broadcasts possible. And uh, Bucky, thank you for joining us as well. Thank you, Bill. We made it through. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't we, though? So we're going to wrap it up from here. Thank you very much tonight for joining us from Tacoma, Washington. I'm Bill Edwards. Remember the score once again, Georgia Southern 48, Arkansas State 21 for the second national championship in a row. From Tacoma, good night, everybody. Diamond Bowl, seen here on ESPN. This one, from start to finish, belong to Tracy Ham. First quarter, 10-7, Georgia Southern. Place kicker Tim Foley hits on one of his division AA record-setting four field goals, 13-7, Georgia Southern. Second quarter, quarterback Tracy Ham takes a quick drop. Then heads upfield on the quarterback draw. This one, 25 yards. TD, 23-7, Georgia Southern. Third quarter, second and four from the 31. Am runs the option. He'll take it himself up the seam into the end zone, 34-7. The senior from Florida was all over the field from the 12. Ham fakes the handoff, fakes the pitch. Guess what? Takes it himself. Touchdown. Your final, 48-21. Georgia Southern gets the W and the Division I AA championship. They finish the season with a 13-2 record. Arkansas State still finishes with an impressive 12-2-1. and one. Get it, please. It's time for the Irk Russell Show. More time the second time. I never thought it would uh, be forthcoming like this, but here we are. And... Uh, this is it. This is one more time, period. <laughs> now, you guys have been out here before, and they, you say that uh, that really isn't the advantage that a lot of people want to make it. I can't see any particular advantage to having done this before. Um, 
I wish I could think up something that uh, was advantageous for us and we'd spread it around and see if we couldn't get a mental edge. I think perhaps the fact that um, all of this is not brand new to our players might be of some benefit, but uh, for the life of me, I can't think what it is. Coach Mike Healy said that the thing that really impressed him about this team, they take nobody lightly, and they treat every game as just another game. This isn't a championship to them. The seniors aren't thinking this is our last ball game. They're just ready to play. Well, perhaps that's true. Um, I hope it is. Uh, our guys have uh, played each week as just one more time. This is it, the most important game in the world. And uh, I hope that uh, their approach to this game will be the same. They're a loose bunch. Uh, nothing seems to bother them too much. Uh, everything's turned out well so far. So, heck, we've got a, another chance. Let's get them one more time. Let's go one more time. And we'll be back with the first half highlights after this. Stats for Dwayne Brown, and he said in the newspaper he was tired of hearing about Tracy Ham. He was going to show us who was the better quarterback, and so he did. He proved Tracy was better. On the first play of the national championship, Brown pitched to Boris Whiteside for four yards before Robert Underwood knocked him out of bounds. But on the game's second play, Brown and fullback Richard Kimball missed their exchange. The ball fell right into a pile of white jerseys, and senior defensive guard Donnie Allen came up with his biggest fumble recovery of his career at Arkansas State's 35. Tracy Hamm and company went right to work. Gerald Harris got the call on first down. He sliced off the left side for five yards. After getting one first down, Ricky Harris got another, picking up 13 yards around the right side to the ASU 12. But when the Eagle Express ran out of steam at the four, Tim Foley came on to boot the first of four playoff record field goals for the night. A perfect 20-yarder to put Southern ahead for good, three to nothing, and that was as close as it would get all night. When the Indians got the ball back, this play looked a lot better than it was. Boris Whiteside appeared to gain 20 yards on the right side, but as you can see from the ground camera in slow motion, he stepped out of bounds just after taking the pitch and actually lost two yards on the play. Dwayne Brown then tried to get the six yards he needed on third down and more and almost got Nay Young another interception for his scrapbook. But the Savannah Junior couldn't quite hang on. With Santa himself cheering the Eagles on, the Georgia Southern scoring machine got cranked up again. Ham on a keeper began a 62-yard march to pay dirt with a 13-yard dance into ASU territory. And just to show him that he could do it again just about whenever he felt like it, uh, this one clicked for 10 yards. Tracy's first pass was a big success on the night, too, as he hit wide open Tony Belzer for 16 yards down to the Indian 23. Six plays later, it was 10-0 Southern as Gerald Harris dove in for his 74th touchdown as an Eagle. And it appeared GSC was going to get another big break. Mike Adams had trouble handling Rob Witten's kickoff, dropping it twice, while Taz Dixon came flying in just a split second too late to recover. But this Indian attack became a massacre as fullback Ricky Jamison blew through for 17 yards before Nay Young could stop him. It was frightening to the GSC faithful to watch Arkansas State move. Brown hitting split in Fred Barnett for another 10 yards. And on first and 10 from the Eagle 15, Brown pitched to Boris Whiteside, who wasn't touched, as he raced to the happy hunting ground, cutting GSC's lead to three again, 10-7. The Indians had gone 97 yards and eight plays. As the first quarter was drawing to a close, the Eagle Express was on their way to getting three of those points back, Tracy firing to Monty Sharp for 21 yards on the period's final play. The second half of the first half started with Gerald Harris bursting off the left side for 13 yards through a big hole, thanks to Dennis Franklin, Charles Cochran, and Sean Ganey. But once again, GSC had to settle for three. And Tim Foley booted another one through from 30 yards out, 13 to seven Southern. And when the Eagles forced Arkansas State to punt again, the Eagle Express was back in full gear. Tracy hitting Ricky Harris for a big gain to the ASU 36. Gerald Harris carried the mail next, and he went off right tackle for 17 yards down to the Indian 21. Tracy then put the Eagles on the five-yard line, first and goal with this scramble when he could find no one open and got out of trouble, as usual. But a procedure penalty pushed the Eagles back to the eight-yard line. Ham on a third down pass to Delano Little in the end zone, waited a split second too late, and the ball was knocked harmlessly to the turf by Mike Adams. So Tim Foley came in to tie his own playoff record of three field goals in a game and booted one from 25 yards away. It was now 16 to seven, Georgia Southern. And hats off to the Southern faithful who for the second year in a row traveled 3,000 miles to watch their team play for the national title and sensing something special. And was the Eagle defense fired up? 
Well, does it snow in Greenland? Robert Underwood and Flint Matthews smell that one coming as the GSC defenders forced Arkansas State to punt again. This time, GSC started their second TD drive deep in a hole at the five. But on third and six, Tracy connected with Ricky Harris for 27 yards up to the 36-yard line. The Eagles got 19 more on a perfect pass between two defenders to Delano Little, who made a sensational diving catch at the enemy 45. And Coach Larry Lancewell...